<laughs> Uncle Joey here, bitches. Listen, let's start this party off right. Every time I've taken a lift to the airport, it's tremendous. Whether the ride, the driver, they got the purple light in front now, a little light in front to let you know they're in the house. The, the, the drivers are always great. I always have a great conversation. I got to go on the 405, which is a pain in the ass. What I'm trying to say is when you drive for the right ride-sharing app, every trip can feel like a walk in the park. With Lyft, you can pick your own hours and work when you want. Lyft can make driving the best job in the world. I'm going to do you a favor, all right? Go to Lyft.com today, and I'm going to give you a $500 new driver bonus. That's Lyft.com today slash Joey. Lyft.com slash Joey, and I'm going to give you a $500 new driver bonus. Limited time. Terms apply. Number two, bidets are back. There's no reason to walk around with a stinky fucking pussy. <laughs> And a stinky fucking asshole, all embarrassed and shit. Somebody wants to eat your ass. You got to call a timeout and go take a whiff. Fuck that. But days are back. And the church of what's happening now would like to introduce the best portable bidet out in the market. A portable device that sprays your butthole clean with water. You understand me? Hello, tushy.com slash church and get 10% off. All right. But days are back. Go check it out right now while we're talking shit here. HelloTushy.com slash church. And they're going to give you 10% off. This is the perfect Father's Day gift. This is the perfect Mother's Day gift. You ever look at your mom cooking? And you're like, I wonder what her ass smells like. <laughs> anyway, go to HelloTushy.com. Hit it, Lee. Oh, shit. Wheeler Walker Jr. in the house. There you go. There you go, cocksuckers. The church of what's happening now. Wheeler Walker Jr., Lee Syed. Hit the siren, cocksucker. Let these people know what time it is. You're slipping already. See, it should have been portable Man. on call. He He's almost on... fucking died. He, he almost died. You see what I'm saying? There you go. It's all over. Uncle Joey's here, and he ain't bringing the fucking cops. You had him there waiting for me, cocksucker. Anyway, Monday, or whatever the fuck you're going to listen to this shit, Wednesday. March 29th, my main man's here. It's a pleasure to have you on. Man, the show. I'm such a fan. So I'm so happy to be here. I appreciate it. I'll tell you what. I've never. I've been on a lot of podcasts, a decent amount. I've never had this much fun this early. Bro. Oh please! This I guy mean, we're in the died. we're in the first fucking minute, and we're we're in the big time partying. Here. Oh yeah, we know we have we have to have fun here. And you 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 like you were like the nicest person that's ever come in here. I come here, and I cough, I've puked on uh, like next to people before. Well, I thought you were dying. And you said yeah, I took one one bong hit. He was ready to call the police. <laughs> like the ambulance for me. Now you ready to do me. another one? He coughed. Sure, might as well. No. This guy coughed for fucking half an hour. Oh my god, his face was beat. Beat red like those stars. How many stars did you eat tonight? I had two of the transmission fluids. Well, you gotta eat five more stars to get the part of six, seven more stars. <laughs> okay. It's Monday night. We ain't fucking around tonight. Wheeler came all the way up from Tennessee. Not that you know, I'm on land. Yeah, I want to see this guy fucking dead. Yeah, no, no, you have no idea. We 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 got an ambulance on call right now. Hit the buzzer. Hit the fucking siren, <laughs> cocksucker. We got the ambulance on call here today. There you go. He's right around the corner. And shit. Help! Send help! We got noise effects and everything for you tonight. We're going deep into the murky waters. How was your weekend, Lisa? I had a good weekend. <clears throat> what did I do this weekend? You know what? Actually, I uh, went to Santa Monica on Friday. You walked around. I did. I actually went to seafood. Santa Monica. I went up and I, 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 like an idiot, I was a few minutes late. And I, I missed seeing actually Willie do the, the show, but I got to see him after. He had two great shows. That I was told that was great. The ice house, is, the ice house is fucking great. I don't know. Small, perfect, it's so much fun. Intimate. The drinks are good. Oh my god. The staff is friendly. Nobody busts your balls. What'd you do last weekend, brother? Me, I saw some. Uh, I saw some fucking uh, country music. Actually, some good. You, you ever heard Nikki Lane? She's really good. You got to no. check her out. She's Did you watch good. her in Nashville or here? I was here. I got okay. here a few days early. She played. She just played uh, the El Rey and fucking packed house. Prettiest girl, and uh, she uh, she can sing her ass off. And the band was great. And uh, she she might 
Am I going to get myself in trouble? She might be singing on my new record, but I don't know if I'm supposed to say it. Now, your new record comes out June 2nd, that new record, or another another. That one, no, no, June 2nd, that one comes out, Um, the new one, and uh, uh, that's the one that she may or may not sing on, but I forget if I'm allowed to say it or not. Now, the first time I saw you was on Rogan. I listened to the jam. I went to a friend's house two weeks ago to watch a fight, and one of his buddies was there, and he goes, have you seen this band? Something sad, but they put mask on. I go turn it off. <laughs> like I don't even want to hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't like that shit. I like music. You want to play music? Play fucking music. Well, that's why I'm a fan. You you love all the shit I love. You know, like uh, Skinner, Sabbath. Jesus you know, Christ. that real real shit. Yeah. It's crazy. Like whenever I get confused about what what I'm supposed to do, I'll read a book or something. I'll write a little bit and I'll put on Skinner. And I'll put on one of the shows they did, like one of the videos from the shows they did in England, or one of the shows in Oakland, or the black and white one from Asbury Park, New Jersey. I'll watch all that shit for hours at three in the morning. Like when I don't need to be doing something, and I wake up in the middle of the night all fucking dazzled. And what I get from it is they didn't give a fuck. That's why they were that good. Well, that's the crazy. When I was that's the bottom line. What's crazy is when I was when I was in high school in Kentucky, it was like. Skinner wasn't cool. It was like there were rednecks and there were like super rednecks, you know? Like you didn't want to be like the, like it was almost like Skinner was like the not cool band. And then <coughs> you, 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 then after school, you're like, you don't, you play it. You're like, how the fuck did I miss out on this? It's the best fucking shit I ever heard. Like you, was it today? You, you tweeted about Simple Man recently. Yeah, which is, today. Today. Uh, is today? Yeah. Was, is there a better fucking song than that? No, there isn't. No, yeah, there I mean, isn't. It's just perfection, you know. But I like that other one too. That the, the whiskey bottle, brand new car, oak tree, you're in my way. Uh, who comes up with that? Yeah, it doesn't seem like they just got fucked up and jammed, kind of, for a while. Whatever they did was working. Like whatever they were doing. Yeah, I mean those first, especially to me, the first two records are like there's not a bum note. I mean, there's they're both perfect records. Like they were musicians. When I watched that video. I love watching musicians. Tuesday's Gone, you like that? Tuesday's one? Gone. I love that song. I love watching musicians. Like, I love the whole watching the drummer, then you know, I watch the bass player for a while, I watch the guitar player, and then in my mind, I try to figure out how the fuck are they putting it all together. The brilliance that you have is the lyrics. I fucking love all that shit. Thanks, man. My biggest. Uh, not fear, not nothing like that. My biggest envy is people who can write lyrics. I think that's the toughest fucking thing. I'll tell you what, you know, I'm trying to, you know, when I try to, because people come to me now, they want me to write songs for other artists, and I'll try to do it. My thing was, I wasn't trying to be funny. It was just like, I was so fucking, pi- when I made that record, and you, I think you can hear it on the record, the first one, Redneck Shit, which, can I do a plug? It's only five ninety nine on iTunes. How about that? Bam. That's fucking cheap. Cheap. I was I was like I just I don't want to fucking take like usually you write a song and the way you would probably write your joke you know although you don't have to but I, usually you write fuck shit like you can't say that on radio exit out so I was like I'm just gonna make a record where I'm not gonna fucking x out any of the bad I'm just gonna re- if I'm paying for it myself I'm just gonna record it the way I want to do it and I we, and of course I look back at the band the studio guys and they're just fucking on the floor laughing you know because they're like you're not supposed to sing fuck you bitch in the song you dumb how are you gonna get on the radio I'm like. I'm not going to get on the radio anyway. I may as well sing what I want to sing, you know? Well, you uh, you were saying, like, you didn't want to be a redneck. Like, I come from, I'm from Boston, and up there, like, it's there's a real negative look on, like, the whole South. So, like, it, it's weird. It's interesting to hear, even in the South, you don't want to be, like, seen as a Well, redneck. it's weird, yeah. But it's kind of like, it's almost like family. It's like, when I'm in... When I was in Kentucky, I didn't want to be too much of a redneck. Then I'm when I'm out here in L.A., all of a sudden, I'm the most southern guy you've ever met you know it's like don't make fun of the fuck you know especially out here you know la is like very uh what, what's the i mean i don't want to say i don't wanna get into politics like liberal but it's like you know it's like whole nother world and they make fun of like the red states well they, look, I, they I, look down they, they look they naturally look down these fucking mutts out here <laughs> naturally look down on that and it's something that's not uh they don't talk about it's something that's in their dna 
Yeah, it's but like it's in their DNA. Like, like if you say you're from Kentucky or Tennessee or Alabama out here, they they giggle. Yeah, I remember they did that to my brother. My brother went off to school and he was like, I remember I'd never heard this joke before, but some guy came up to him and was like, "Man, your your phone bills must be so high." He's like, "Why?" He's like, "Cause you dock so slow on the phone." He's back when you had to pay your fucking phone bills by the minute. And I never even I didn't know he had an accent. It's like you know when you're in it. When you're in Kentucky, you don't. He, to me, my my family didn't have an accent. Then you leave the state, and all of a sudden, everyone's calling you a redneck. You you get it hits you really fast. You're like, oh fuck, I'm the dude I was making fun of back when I was a kid. You know. I got it. By the age of like nine or ten, I got it. I was living in New York City, but I go to Florida. <laughs> Isn't it weird sometimes that the Florida is the South? You forget. I go to Florida, and they had kids that would move in from. The redneck parts of Florida, like the parents got into drug dealing or the father became a pilot or something, because that's who was doing all the, the fucking muling yeah. with badass rednecks and shit. And I went to his house once or something. They were playing music, but my mom played country music at the bar. She had a couple songs. I can't remember who today. I know she she personally liked Johnny Cash, my mom. Yeah, I mean, she She took me to the movies to see that movie when it came out in 42nd Street. We went together. So she personally liked Johnny Cash. So I always liked it. When I became enthralled with it, it it's with sports. I saw how the people that I grew up with acted, and I saw how the people in Texas, when they watched the football game, how they acted. What's the difference? They're both fans, but in Texas, it seemed like their their heart was really into it, where the people I hung out with were doing it for gambling purposes or to wear the jersey. Something. Well, yeah, that's that was going to say. That's, where I come from, there was, there was no gambling. It was like, which is a weird thing when you get to bigger cities. It's all about gambling. Like, you didn't need, people would kill themselves over the games without the fucking, they didn't, they didn't, need, they didn't need to raise the stakes at all, man. It's like, Kentucky just lost in the tournament Sunday, and... I got on the phone with my with my nephew, and he was crying his ass off. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, you it's know. real. And so, I I remember like watching the thing that really pushed me over the top was watching Earl Campbell on Monday Night Football, and how those people would get pom poms, and when he scored, they would all sing that song, Houston Oilers, and they were all their fucking pom poms, and I couldn't wait to go to Texas, and I would ask people. You know, like uh, adults in Jersey, I want to go to Texas, and they'd say, what are you, fucking crazy? They'll kill you down there. Their initial reaction was always ill. You know, that's the way they're programmed. It's nothing against them. They just see it that way. There's just a bunch of rednecks down there. They don't get it. Yeah, I feel like, it, don't you think it's kind of getting, <coughs> getting worse with this last election? I feel like it's kind of, I don't want to, again, I don't mean to steer into politics, but I feel like as of late, the, the, uh, the quote unquote redneck has been part of the news even it's like you it's always every news and I don't I'm with you I don't I, I can't, if I would never watch the news again I'll be happy but it's like it's you dopes who fuck who fucking voted for him it's your fucking you know it's like now look what you did everyone's they're yelling at him you know that's that's all I see oh. that's the worst fucking thing in the world that's going on right now it's the worst it's not even It's not even funny anymore. It's not even funny anymore. It's not even worth putting your TV on anymore. really isn't. Whether it's CNN, whatever the fuck you put on, it's 15 minutes of this shit. People fucking screaming. It's 15 minutes of this shit. I I don't don't even watch it no more. I live for 5 o'clock news and 6.30 news. I stopped. I stopped world news tonight. That's it. No more. It's not even... But to, to go back to your question, my wife's in Tennessee. Yeah, so you were saying before. And I've been with my wife since 1999. And when I first met my wife, my wife was trying to act. And you met her out here? Yeah, and she always came home with a story. And I know from, you know, it's like when you try to talk to a girl and go, listen, you got a reputation of sucking dicks. And she'll go, what are you talking about? I don't know what the <laughs> fuck you're talking about. I hang out with six guys and you sucked all six of their dicks. Okay, what do you think? We don't fucking talk? It's like... They act, it's like I had a friend here that had a Mexican chick living, uh, not living in a house, you know, uh, cleaning her house. And every time I go over there, if there were people there, they'd act like the woman wasn't even in the fucking room. 
Yeah, that's not cool. No, it was like a natural thing for them. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. It's it's a natural thing in you that you look upon them or you look down on them. And I think the same thing happens with people out here, people on the East Coast especially, how they look at people from the South. I always got it. I, I love the South. Because that was your first thing you said to me. Is that you were you said you're a Cuban? I'm redneck, a Cuban. Which first I, I want to find out what that. Where's means. Cuba? It's even more south than fucking Miami. Yeah, I, mean, I never thought about. So that's that. number one. Yeah. I'm as southern as can fucking be. Yeah. Number two, I appreciate and I love everything about the culture, and I get the fucking culture. You know, I get the culture. I get my wife. Listen, I don't want to really want to go visit my wife's family in May. I can't lie to you. It's four days of fucking torture. There's only one thing I go back for, and that's the Lee's Fried Chicken in the Walmart. The best Walmart in the world. I got two sweaters from Walmart seven years ago, American-made. <laughs> They've gone through two laundry machines. They're the best sweaters I got. I buy all my shit when I go back to Tennessee. All that fat man clothes, you got to buy it in Tennessee. That's where they make it good. I will say that, L- oh, not really on topic, but L.A. is at least, I actually like New York City for me, I'm not even joking when I say this, I I don't think I've been there 10 times in my life. Like, I went there once as a kid, and I fucking flipped. When you go from Kentucky to New York City for it's the first quick, time. It's quick. It's just like. It's fast, brother. It looks. I freaked out. Like, yeah, I, I'd never seen homeless people. I'd never seen. There's, like, stereo stores on every fucking corner. I was there with my grandma. from. She's from Nashville. She was from Nashville. We went there, and we, we had dinner, and out, there was, like, a window right here. And some homeless dude just walked up right to us, just dro- fucking dropped his drawers while we were eating dinner. I think it was probably the first dick I saw besides mine. And I'm sitting there with my grandma trying to eat a fucking burger. How old are you? I was probably 10 or 11. She's like, you know, you need to go see a big city. <laughs> but at least, and, even, I'm, I, and I'm saying this is like, you know, I'm being honest. Like I, the big buildings and everything, it fucking flipped, it I freaked know, me out, it's, it's man. A, it's not, I haven't lived there in 20 years. Because I was listening to, what was it last week? The Jim, was it Jim Florentine? Yeah, Jim Florentine. Who, who I know, know from uh, Stern. I mean, I don't know him, but I've hear, heard him on Stern a lot. Um, you, that's why I love this this show, because I listen to you guys talk about New York City, like specific blocks and shit. I don't know New York City from my asshole. I listen to the whole two-hour podcast of you guys talking about little bars and shit. You, you know, I was like, it reminded me. I don't know. I got to go explore New York a little bit. Man. I, I haven't spent much time in the South. Is it? Does it seem like the same country? As like when when you go to New York and L.A., like just the way you like, it just almost seems like we shouldn't be the same country. Like not not in any negative way, but just you're gonna get yourself in trouble here. Um, it's crazy. I think I I get it. I think it's the way. Probably for you. I mean, for me, like I said, for me, New York City didn't seem like the same fucking country when I visited. But probably for some, if you, if you're from New York City and you go to Kentucky, I assume it's fucking feels. Crazy. You you feel when I was a kid, I went from Miami, from uh, New York City to Miami, and even though Miami was a big city then, not as big as it is now, I would get a little, you know, you could go to the store and do a drive-through store and get milk or whatever. I travel every week, and I'll tell you what saves me is when I go to the different states. It lets me know that my hope is still alive, that people still think the way I do in some cases. You know, I, I do well in Nashville. You said you're playing Lexington. In a couple yeah, of I'm doing Lexington. The last time I did Lexington, some guy ran out and said, I'm a Christian. Fuck you, fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> some shit like that. But none of that stuff bothered. Like, none of that. I never looked at it like that. I, I got what Lee meant to say in a way, which is true. When you it's go to New culture, York yeah. for, to fucking, when you go from New York to to, to uh, uh Jackson, Tennessee, which, by the way, I got to tell you something about Jackson, Tennessee. I had some of the best spaghetti I've ever had in my life in Jackson, Tennessee. See, I've had great pizza in Nashville. My mind is open. Well, Nashville is basically a big city. Now, yeah, yeah, my mind is open where a lot of people's isn't. You know? Do you play Nashville a lot? Fuck yeah. I developed as a canal 15 years ago. I couldn't play Nashville. Well, that's a different. That's a difference. It was a yeah. different Nashville. It was a little bit more Christian. I bombed. I saw Doug Stanhope bomb. I said, "This, I'll never come back to Nashville." Yeah, because my 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 all my all the my mom's side, of my family's from there. So I've been going there since I was a kid before I moved there. And when I was a kid, it was a ghost town. 
And you might see Crystal Gale at the grocery or Loretta Lynn walking around. And nowadays, it's fucking, it's turned Steve, into Vegas. Steven you know? Tyler. Yeah. It's fucking amazing how many people live in Nashville. Yeah, we had Ralphie May in here a couple of weeks ago, and he was saying how it's amazing. It's like, like he loves oh, it. Oh, yeah. But how, is Ralph, I gotta, is he cool? I don't know him. Yeah, he's a but good he, dude. He, he's a, he, he wanted to do some shows with me. Um, and I don't, my problem is the agents call so-and-so wants to do a show, and I just won't get back to him. But he wanted to do some shows. I should probably get back to him. If he's cool. Yeah, he's cool as fuck. You have a good time with him. But no, that's how I look at it. Like, I, I was always open-minded to it. I developed as a comic in the state of Texas. I own the state of Texas Where? a lot. Name it. Because we, we, when I was a kid, we lived in Houston for a couple of years. From Lubbock to El Paso to Victoria to, 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 to Corpus Christi, to Houston, to Dallas, to Addison, to... Austin, to, or no? Yeah, Austin, Conroe, Pasadena, Texas, Beaumont, Texas. Texas was very good to me, man. Now, there's bands I know, there's artists I know who who you, you literally, no one I aren't listening would have ever heard of, who are country musicians, who are millionaires in Texas. And they don't leave the state. They, no. tour, they just tour Texas. No, that's it. It's like its own country. Texas, is as a comic... You could spend a month and a half in Texas. Well, you could. Make, I'll bet it's, there's plenty of comics too who just only play Texas and make millions. I bet. Well, yeah, you know they have a lot of little rooms that those agents won't call me. You know they have a lot of little rooms that other comics have that I'm not aware of. But I developed in Texas. Oh, I didn't know that. I, uh, I never really went to Alabama. I went to a couple spots in Louisiana. I did well in Tupelo one time, maybe 15 years ago as a feature act. I ate dick in New Orleans, but New Orleans ain't no motherfucking comedy city. And uh, where else? Clark, Tennessee, I ate a bag of dicks at a fucking army base. Yeah, I opened up. For, I didn't have the money to pay the band, so I opened up for David Allen Cove and Chattanooga. Just me with an acoustic guitar and fucking. Yeah, I ate, ate a bag of dicks there. I mean, it's like. There's two. It's two. It's almost like you. It's like it's almost. There was no, no not enough noise. Now, it's Chattanooga's a college town. No, I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah. What's in Chattanooga? University of... Tennessee? No, that's Knoxville. Knoxville, you're right. The yeah. Chattanooga was, has the trains. but the, Chattanooga actually used to be almost bigger than Nashville because it had the Chattanooga choo-choo. It used to be the place to be. Now, Knoxville was good to me, too. They got a good record store in Knoxville. I haven't been there again in 15 years. This is... Well, know. I'll say even for me as a country musician, you know, in all... If it makes you feel better, the more almost deep south I go, the less the audiences show up. Just because, you know, like I can sell out a show in L.A. because you only got to sell to one percent of the fucking city. Once you get down to like lower south and small towns, like to sell out the gig, everyone in town's got to fucking show up. It's, it's just tougher. It's like they're not on the internet, they're not on Twitter. They don't give a fuck about that shit. So now, even with country music, it's tough. Now, when you go to Nashville and play, a lot of people show up. Yeah, decent. Well, we're we're doing. Can I do my second plug? Uh, we're doing three dates to three record release shows: June second in Nashville, at the Eggs and Inn. June sixth, New York City Bowery Ballroom. I've never been there. Is it cool? You know, I've never been there. June eighth, L.A. Troubadour. You guys want to come? Yeah, June eighth. That what night is that? A Thursday? Well, I have no fucking. Yeah, idea. something. If I, it looks like I got you a should. date in Bray. I got I got Bray well, that okay. weekend. Well, if you got some time, we got an opening band. You can do a do a little some jokes. Yeah, between, no, no, no. Do if, some if, jokes between. If bands. I'm here at June eighth, I'll go watch. Absolutely, I'll go watch at the Troubadour because Dan Tanner's is right next door. So trust me, it's easy to well, get. Troubadour me is, a, is pretty good for country music. I heard in the old days. Well, isn't that where the Eagles started and Linda yeah, Ronstadt? Yeah, a lot of that kind. A lot of that, which is, is that country? I don't know, but yeah. No, yeah, I think like so. A, was, easy listening is what they called it. Yeah, I hate that term, but yeah, I guess it was, you know. You can't deny that Eagles have good songs, but um, uh, yeah, that's where all that shit started. And, uh, band I love, Flying Burrito Brothers. You ever listen to that? Yeah, a while back, but not and Graham years. Parsons and all that shit. That was all uh, Troubadour, I think. So we did that. We played it on our last tour. I remember because I love Guns N' Roses, and Guns N' Roses just played there for like to warm up for the show. He's explaining to me how like Axel would come back for his like his like, uh, whoa, what's it called? Is it pep talk? Costume changes, and oh. they, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it, but like he would take his like oxygen puffs and shit back there. I don't know. Yeah, when you you know that guy moves around a lot. 
The yeah. Troubadour was probably their warm up gig. That's not a big spot, is it? No, it was really small. It was, co- it was cool, cool to be there like a week or so after uh, Axel and the gang and all them were there. Now, how long have you been playing music? I mean, I've been playing music my whole life, but um. And you composed all these songs. Pretty yeah, much? yeah. Uh, there were there were eleven songs on the Redneck shit, the first record, the one you like, which I again appreciate. Um, I wrote all those myself. There's eleven on the new one that's coming out June second, and I wrote all. I wrote all those except for three I co-wrote with friends. So I don't sing, I don't sing anything. I, I'll play like a Waylon song or Waylon cover live. I'll do a couple covers live, but I don't record anything that I don't write. When you do the Waylon songs, do you throw a little zinger in there? just to Well, I do. I purposely do one that people don't know that well. It's called Outlaw Shit. It's one of my favorite songs ever. Um, and Waylon, and actually my, my buddy who did my records actually did this did that song. it was actually they finished it after he passed away um and shooter jennings redid it with my dave cobb an amazing producer who did my records and so the guys who because I, pl- I played the song because the guys i knew in the in the in my band had played on the record it's like i'm gonna play fucking Waylon with the guys who played with Waylon. and i found out later that they fucking this dude didn't even fucking play on the record now, do you work Texas a lot still? No, uh, a little bit. I'm gonna do. I'll bet I'll do more this year. But when you go down there, where do you play? Well, we this last, you know, it's weird doing music because you don't. When the first album comes out, you don't know how big. Do you play a hundred, two hundred, a thousand? Five. We played like probably five hundred ish rooms. You know what fucking sucks? And I'll, we played a lot of these. Like I don't know if there's an equivalent in comedy, but we played a lot of these fucking like um. They have like a house of blues, which I fucking it's all you know it's like the almost like the fucking uh, chilies of music clubs. Although I do like chilies, um, and then they're like the main room and the sec. We play a lot of second like the second rooms where you're like we do a sound check and they're like, "Hey man, you got a, a mic for a kick drum?" I'm like, I don't know. It's like, oh shit, they're using it upstairs. Like it was like leftovers almost. I think they use it mainly for like fucking parties. And what shit. do they call that room? There's a room for that at all the. I don't know the House of Blues. But that's what I call my. I call my I call my agent. I go, We're, don't play, don't book me any more fucking shows, where they're selling Blues Brothers DVDs. That's my new rule. <laughs> if they're selling the Blues Brothers DVD, or they're selling, or if they're selling top hats with a black fucking suit and tie, I don't want to play there. Nothing against the Blues Brothers, but like, it's not the best fucking sound in the world. No, well, they all have those. Uh, when I was in Louisiana shooting one time, I called my agent. I go, yeah, I want to do Louisiana. Is there anything in New Orleans? He goes, yeah, there's a house of blues. I'll get you a number for the room. It was it was only set 114 people. That's it. I was like, I have to do 22 shows. I might as well do it at this little, and they wanted a ton of loot, so I had to do that little theater right in the heart of... Yeah, the, we played in New Orleans. It was the craziest gig. We got in right before the fucking show because it was like some there was some accident on the highway, and we got in right. It actually turned out to be a great gig, but there weren't that many people there. It was like, it's like you're in fucking jazz. You know, you can see any music you want. It's hard to like grab a grab an audience when there's like the fucking greatest jazz. Like now I feel like you could fucking grab any audience. Like, they'll be at a bar looking at the fucking college game, and they'll go, what the fuck did he just say? Yeah, well, that's the thing is you got to you got, you got to get people to know about it. But the problem is, and where I had a blast last time was with, like, the scene you guys know, which I didn't really know about, which is I'm going to. So I put out this dirty record, and I'm like, I'm not censoring it. And then I was like, my, pe- my fucking people, which is just one fucking doofus, was like, that we, there's no radio, there's no nothing. Then I come out here, I do Rogan, I do, you know, like Fitzsimmons. I do all these podcasts and shit. It's like, that was bigger than any of my friends who'd ever done fucking The Tonight Show or any of that shit. There's this underground thing. You do YouTube channels and shit like that. It's like, <clears throat> the world has fucking opened up to, um, and I'll tell you right now, that I actually just sent a, shot a message to Rogan before I came over here to tell him that I was coming here, but... He's, like, doing, like, 50 nights on The Tonight Show. Yeah, no, it's like The, the Tonight Show. Joe Rogan's show is, like, doing an HBO special. 
for a comic if you go on there and fucking kill it. You know, today I was really upset. I've been upset all day till I came here to see you tonight. Yeah, I cheer a lot. I got home like at 4.30. I'm trying to pitch a fucking TV show, you know, and it's like, I got to tell you, in the middle of pitching it, I'm like, do I even want to really fucking do this? Do I really want to even do this? Well, then why? Yeah, why? Was it your? Did it start with you? Yeah, it's it's a it's a show we're pitching. It's a great show. It's great written. But there's times I'm sitting there going, "What do I want a TV show? That's fucking work." That's Isn't it work. weird how that happens? Yeah. That's work. If I want to do anything, I might as well come in here every night at eight o'clock and do an eight o'clock fucking Tonight Show here. Get a band, get a house band, get a fucking studio. That's what I want to do. Is get on here from eight. Well, I fucking, fucking watch it. I think uh, I don't think we had this on the air, but I saw you when I, I was out here doing press, and I did. I told you I did Fitzsimmons podcast, and he invited me out to do uh, to watch go to a show at the Improv. I'm like I'll go, and all these fucking uh, kind of cool comedians, Galifianakis, Sarah Silverman, all, all came on stage, and then you came on stage. I'd never heard of you before, and. You told me just now that you were felt a little out of place, which you look. I was like, I don't know if this guy fits in with the bill. And then five minutes in, I'm like, my new favorite comic right here is the funniest fucking shit I ever heard because it was like mixed in with all that kind of weird kind of stuff. I was like, all right, this is this is what I, it's almost like pure country music. It's like this is what I like, fucking jokes. No, I had to go out them heavy that night. They weren't. Taking so you remember the gig? Oh, please, I know the gig because that guy from that called me. And said, what the fuck was that tonight? You know, Brody called me and said, Zach called me. He said that that was the craziest set he ever saw in his life. I had to go take it from him. I don't have time to oh, be dude, fucking you, around. Oh, dude, you came on and you fucking mopped the, mopped the, the floor. Me. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was like watching Hendrix. I mean, the Hollywood fucking... improv is very PC. Oh, and yeah. And they try to PC it on you for certain shows. And that show, they try to be ha ha and hee hee. And you know what? I'm not going down the hill for you to be hot, honey. He, again, I go back. To but you had that. At, you had a fucking attitude that yeah. day in a great way, like kind of like fuck all you fuckers for for even showing up or laugh. That's that's kind of what I love. Well, it? again, we go back to skinned '76 at the Oakland Coliseum. Look at them on stage. Look at the singer. He didn't give a fuck. Yeah. He didn't jump around. He didn't show you his tattoos. His hair wasn't combed. He probably smelled like a billy goat. They were drinking Budweiser out of a can. At the end, watch, he just ends the songs like this. There's no jumping up and down and acting like you got a fuck. Nothing. Yeah, it's the art, art of not giving a fuck. I think know. with my first record, I was like... You eliminate you, that. You, you, they're like, can we... They asked me for a bleeped version. I go, I own the fucking record. No, there's no bleeped version. Because I go, I don't care if it sells. And then it started taking off, and I'm like... Then you got to watch yourself, because then I start. you start to care. You're like, fuck, should I have, have, should I have a bleeped version? Then you no, gotta be, be like, your then, you, then, then, then you got to be like fucking. Low that little get, get, Your yeah. original thought is the right fucking instinct. Yeah. You know, you you. It's when we double check ourselves that we fuck up. It's when you listen to people, which is hard. That's days. hard too. Be, hard these days because everyone has access to you. You know. No, well, the problem that you have, especially in our situation, is this is the podcast that we started from a ground root situation, and we've gone through all the hurdles ourselves like you did you follow these hurdles yeah and then it gets to a point that you have this growth and now people are coming in and fucking with your growth oh dude yeah oh they fuck with your growth and unless you tell them knock it off this ain't gonna work unless you do it my way i've been doing this since day one you're a johnny come lately type of motherfucker and now you want to give orders it doesn't work Oh, well, Nashville's trying, like, not even a joke. They're trying to fucking shut me down right now. And I bet. They don't, they don't, they don't like what... They, and I, I think they like the language is less of a problem than the fact that I'm doing it independently and putting it out myself. Sure. I think that's the... What that's what pissed them off. That's Everybody what pissed them off. a piece of the action. They're now. like, you know, why don't you come to this big fucking label? And I'm like, fuck that. I'll, I want to... Because if I... Where, where were you when I needed you, dog? Yeah, where were you when I came in here and you yeah. told me that that wouldn't sell? That that wouldn't get radio play? Get the fuck out of here. Where were you? You exactly. want nobody? You showed up when I had a million hits. Anybody could show up when you had a million fucking downloads and the and the record is. Uh, well, yeah, I know. I met. You know, I, met I met. Yeah. I met with those fucking dudes. Who sure. Like, how about one version where you say instead of "fuck you, bitch," how about "miss you, girl"? I'm like, I'm, that's not what I'm. That's not what I'm trying to say. Yeah. No. 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 They have. Listen. 
they don't understand the power of the internet today. They don't understand that, and I don't want to harp on this, but it's a reality. The first 90 days, Trump had them by talking the truth. This country's ready for the language. It's part of the country that's still not ready. You know, they're trying to make believe. They don't know what we're talking about. Like, you don't fuck your fucking secretary in the ass behind your wife's back. <laughs> but if I say tit, you get offended. Go fuck yourself. You know what I'm saying? You're banging your fucking babysitter, you disgusting fucking savage. But if I say f uh, suck my dick on stage, you actually go back and ask for your $10 back, you measly fuck. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Those are the man. people that piss me the fuck off. That, oh. they're, gonna, they're here. This is what I'm surrounded with. Yeah, it's, it's fucking it, bullshit because I'm like, why can't... Because I had that argument with my new record I was talking about. And again, not to get on this, like... I, I watched Meet the Press in the morning on NBC and they're talking about... And they're showing a clip of the president talking about grabbing pussy. Why can't I play fuck you bitch on the radio? Or play pussy king on the fucking radio? It's and you know what? Don't even argue with them. Go, okay. Yeah. No worries. I'll come the end. And, they, and what happens, what I didn't realize before it turned out I was smarter than I thought it was... An accident, I was like, well, then don't, you can't have it. When you say you can't have it, no, everybody wants it. You know. It's really crazy how even with the podcast, well, now our agents are starting, but all their advice is bad. All their advice is bad. They have a couple good things that they pop up with that you could independently test on your own without them, if you catch my drift. But their ideas, they just want to burn you out. You know, after this next album, number two, the second album you put out, and it hits number one again and the whole thing. I hope it does. Well, no, knock on wood, it is. It, it will. It will. Because we need this right now. Yeah, well, that was my. that's my goal is I've never cared about the charts, but I'm like, I want a number one country record just to fucking throw Just to fuck face. with them. Yeah. And go, listen, remember what you said? No, here you go. You know, Madonna years ago, 10 years ago, raffled off all her rejection letters. They said people were running for the hills. And she read them. This is what Lee Syed said, president of Icom. You're a worthless bitch. You'll never work in this town. You know. Who said, like that? That. Who said that? No, it's like uh, Madonna read all her rejection oh. letters from back in the day. What the, rec what the record executives said and where they are today and people who said she couldn't sing and all that shit. She raffled them off for charity years ago. Something oh, weird awesome. to do. Yeah, because I think every artist has the same thing as... People think, you know, like you watch them on TV, it's like, oh, they got so much money, they don't care. But you take it more personally than fucking anybody. You know, like, I understand keeping all your rejection letters. I still got, you know, I remember every motherfucker who told yeah. me I couldn't, this yeah. album wouldn't sell or I couldn't do what I was doing. I remember, like, I know their face, I know their name, I know their family, I know everything. Yeah, you, well, never, you remember for the rest of your life. Yeah, you never forget it. And you know what's crazy? That when you get to a certain level, you want to walk up to them and rub it in their face. But at that time, you go, you know what? I won, and he knows it. There's nothing he could do. He could look me in the eye, and now he can tell me how he's going to book me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why he needs to book me and how he's missed me and how he always believed in me. It's amazing. I was the only one who believed in you. Yeah, and you know what? You, like, I could be the type of guy that could go, go fuck yourself. There's some people who I have said that to, but there's some people who, you know what, remember a couple of years ago, you didn't want to pay me? Well, now you're going to pay me. Yeah, I'm not that, I send, I, I'm with you, I tend not to not yeah, do that. You yeah, cannot, you cannot hold a grudge because somebody didn't pay attention or because you were a little older or because you're fat or something like that. It's amazing. I, right now I talk to our friend, Tommy Easter, <clears throat> and Tommy Easter is a funny guy from the South, just like you. Uh, he doesn't understand what I see. Like when Tommy's is from Atlanta and he's country. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when he walks into this improv and this comedy store in these places, they look at you weird. So I said to him, eliminate that. Go get a commercial agent. You're a country boy. You're going to book every fucking country boy commercial they shoot. And then you walk in there, and it's a completely different ball game. Yeah, I got an offer for a big commercial. I'm so fucking pissed about it. Yeah, they took, they took it back. I'm saying that's why I'm so pissed. But they won. It was like it was. A, I won't say the name of the company. It was some burger chain. They had this new fucking uh, like bourbon bacon burger. You know, with like burger with like fucking. It was a burger with like fucking bourbon and cheese. Right. You know, and fucking Just shit. Asshole. You know. Right. That. Pigs assholes, whatever in it. Yeah. 
bourbon I, I was like, barbecue yeah. sauce. That's <laughs> like eating fucking fucking and I, sperm sauce. And they're like, you know? and they were like, we don't think you do it, but if you know, you know, you're not a sellout. I said, fucking take them. I'm like, yeah, I'm in. And they canceled. I think they probably heard this, didn't listen to the record. Yeah, that's how no, crazy that was I was. It. That was it. And then they, then all of a sudden, that next thing I know, the fucking um, commercial deal is done. But I would, I was ready to sell out right there. You know, I can just imagine when they those four guys hit the the country dudes years ago. How oh, many people? Yeah, well, you know the dude. Uh, yeah, my my hometown. Ron White and uh, and Bill Lingvall and you know Larry the Cable Guy. You know Larry the Cable Guy changed his persona and stuff like that. Whatever, but. I could just see people going. That's not going to work. They're red. Yeah, my, my, fuck you. It's not going to work. My hometown, is, they have a Rupp Arena, which is where the Kentucky play yeah, basketball. Twenty three thousand people. Jeff Foxworthy comes in, sells out the fucking place with a microphone. The gig probably costs him twenty dollars, and he makes a fucking million bucks. He flies in, flies right out after the gig of his own personal plane. So we were we were talking earlier about how like maybe a lot of people in different places don't listen to country or don't really understand the South. Why are there people like you and Jeff Fox? Like, Jeff Foxworthy, I had his CD up in Boston. Yeah. No way. I'd never been to the South. I had his CD. I, because I, that's where it goes back to what I was saying before. In Kentucky, you didn't listen to it because it was like, wasn't cool. It was, oh. it was local shit, you know. I watched Hee Haw when I came from Cuba religiously. And I got it. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I didn't know I was going to end up marrying Hee Haw. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> That's well, not the goal of the show. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I'm married. Listen, my, the first time I took my niece to dinner in Nashville, me, my wife, my niece, and the baby, we went and we got we went to Jimmy D's, this little medium rain steakhouse. No big deal. My, my niece asked me if she should get the gun because when we valet parked, the man was taking your car. That's how country she is. Damn. That country. My wife is fucking country, Jack. And all she needs to do is call her parents in the morning. For the first hour, I live with Hee Then once she takes the kid to school and goes back to Ralph, it smoothens out for a little while. <laughs> back to regular TV. Yeah, back to, back to regular yeah, programming. People, but he all gets a bad rap, but I'll tell you what, they they got some killer music Dog, on that they show. Got, I watched all those episodes Buck when Owens I was a killing kid. It and, Fuck yeah. Uh, Fuck yeah. Some of that great, I mean, great guitar playing, too. It's like they had to ruin it with some of those lame jokes, but I mean, I heard they were bringing it back, and I was like, No. Like, I heard they're bringing it back. I was like, I want to host a new Hee Haw. Then I realized it would be shit. So, so they still do Mad TV, or they canceled it? I think they just brought it back. They brought it back, but they didn't cancel it? Still- I don't think so. Maybe I'll, I can check. No, Adam Ray's on it, Amir K. I didn't hear anything else about it. But no, you never know. Yeah, you're right. They probably bring back Key Hall with somebody Puerto Rican. They just brought back uh, Cash Cab <laughs> without Ben Bailey. I don't know if you saw that. No, they did. Yeah, they're bringing it back and doing like a celebrity version. It's gonna be terrible. I hate that show. What's the new, what was the show that they just put on Netflix? Um, the kids, the show that was on when I was a kid. Um, Popeye. No, no, the the sitcom, the. Uh, the, with uh, with uh, um, the Olsen twins, uh, Full House. Yeah, I was like, that shit show fucking sucked when I was a kid. Why are they bring it? Like, it's like nostalgic and cool to bring it back. Fuck you. We don't want to watch fucking people. Yeah, House some people again. do. Some and, people do. I mean, obviously, it did well. I mean, I was like, everyone was like on the internet was like all excited. It's coming back. I was like, dude, no, you didn't watch that fucking. Try sitting through that show now. It's the worst fucking show. Half the shows you watch now, you're like, well, how the fuck did I watch this? Well, that's the thing is, I'll turn on... You go under this ether, you or every yeah. show, you you watch it 10 years later, and you're like, this is fucking terrible. I'll turn terrible. on, like, just to get motiv- motivated sometimes, I'll turn on, like, you know, country, like, the hit country radio station. I'm like, this is fucking hip-hop. This is rednecks rapping over hip-hop beats. Like, I'd rather listen to NWA. I'm not going to listen to fucking... This fucking shitty country band. Trying now, to your, rap. now your music taste is very broad. You love everything. You I love everything. Artist, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, I grew up probably on it. To be honest, because I was rebelling against where I was from, I grew up on probably more rock. Probably the shit you listen to, the Sabbath and all that fucking, uh, you know, Zeppelin and everything. And then I got into, like I said, when you kind of go out, it's like, no, no, a friend will play you Waylon. You'll be like, no, no, that's my music. It's you know, you take, you take authorship of it later. But who are uh, your early influences? Well, me and the the guy who produced my records, who's amazing, by the way, we had the same, we both agree, a bunch of my friends agree, 
it all starts with the Beatles for us. I don't know if, that was, if you dug the Beatles, but like literally the first time I, I heard, I bet the first Buck Owens song I heard was Ringo singing, Act Naturally. You, you, the cool thing about the Beatles was you could you could listen to it and hear every type. You could hear Chuck Berry. You could hear Rest in Peace. You could hear Helter Skelter was basically in metal. You could hear like almost opera kind of and or, I mean classical music a little bit and like you know Eleanor Rigby or you could hear country like I said they would play a lot of country almost like a they did like uh, Carl Perkins shit. You mean you could you could hear every type of music. Did you like the whole discography of the Eagle, uh, the Beatles? Like, yeah, I liked or, it all. Yeah, everything. The early shit drives me crazy. I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I don't. I, don't I like '66 on, yeah. like that album and all that music. Revolver, uh, Revolver uh, and the White Album, Rubber Soul. and Rubber Soul, and the one when they went to India. They went to India. Oh, let it be. And, no, uh, uh, with the fucking heart. Uh, when the thing. Oh, uh, Sergeant Pepper. I like Sergeant Pepper's Magical also. Magical Mystery Tours. I like. Uh, I'm on the borderline of Help. Help. I'm with is, you. Help. Help. I like that song. Yeah. But yeah. Help. But after Help, I like everything. It's Let weird. It be is brilliant. I will that, say that I'm. I'm with you. Is er, I don't find myself listening to early Beatles now. You know. No. 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 It's like it sounds like kind of. It's but, almost teeny bopper music. But you know what? I, I fucking listen to music a lot, and you broadened me tonight when you said that the Beatles covered everything because I gotta tell you something as soon as you said that I heard the chords to She Loves You yeah 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 the beginning of it and I was like oh shit he's right I've heard that before I have heard that before maybe somebody took it from them or not in the the same chord the same da -da -da -da, not that stuff but just that twang in the chord that uh, John Lennon had or George Harrison was the real catalyst there with the guitar but people don't know the Beatles anymore. The yeah. Beatles don't even fucking matter. People have no... Kids are growing up and hear three Beatles songs on the radio and they don't understand what the Beatles meant. I feel like when I was a kid, I don't know if you guys tell me, but I feel like when I was a kid, maybe was, that timing was like, the Beatles were kind of cool, but Elvis was like oldies music. And right. I, I feel like Beatles are not turning into oldies. But the problem with the Beatles is that unless you grew up with a generation that your parents played the Beatles. Yeah, my parents played a lot. You're lost in the Beatles. All you know about the Beatles is the radio. The songs on the radio. You really never put the whole... You never put on uh, Rubber Soul or fucking... What's... What's to, not tomorrow? Tomorrow never knows. God, what? that's the best fucking song. That's from a they, that's from a Revolver. Revolver. Yeah. They haven't listened to Revolver. They don't understand the whole the changes those motherfuckers made. You know how a band can't stay together and have three albums. How many albums did these savages have? Just estimate. Give me an you know, estimate. So, someone really. told someone told me that from the time they started to when they broke up. They put out they, their whole career lasted the same amount that U two takes between records. That's what someone told me. That U two, the band U two, you know, yeah, they, yeah. Usually, on average they said they take like six, seven years to, to make a new record. That's how long the whole Beatles career was. That's Beginning it. To end. Yeah, their 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 plane landed in um in New York is when when people first heard of them. It was sixty three. They broke up in seventy. Their whole career was seven years. And how many albums did they put out? Estimate. I mean, probably ten. I mean, pro maybe more, but well, it's weird because they had different. Twelve. Um, they put out a different amount. In, albums. The, the, the albums were different in England than here. Some of them, so it's hard to say exact amount. But he just said it twelve. If you, if you didn't listen to the Beatles, what would you recommend somebody to start with? What album? Well, it would, would matter. Start? It would matter who the person was. I would say. I think what you, we just came across, Revolver is a good one. It's kind of got a little bit of everything. I would actually, you know, what Ozzy's favorite album of all time is is what, the White Album. The White Album is brilliant. The White Album is great because you can, again, it's an example of you can get everything. I mean, Helter Skelter is more metal than most shit you, or more hard rock than most shit you'll hear nowadays. Then you've got little ballads and weird fucking Ringo shit. It's all over the place. No, no, no. It's it. Nobody really listens. When I was growing up, people were really into the Beatles, and then when John Lennon died, like a whole fucking era of people went away because 
That's what they were holding on to. That's what they were holding on to is the Beatles get back together. Seriously. That's I was true. I was seventeen so yeah, when I was he got young, shot. Yeah. And I still remember going to New York that Sunday. And at the time I wasn't a Beatle guy, bro. At the time I did not want to listen to the Beatles or Springsteen. I was not interested. I was a, a Zeppelin, Sabbath, Pat Benatar. So you anti know. you were against the Beatles. I was I was against the Beatles because so many people liked the Beatles. It drove me fucking bananas. And then years later in Colorado was when I got sixty six or whatever. And I'm like, wait a second, these cocksuckers want to something. And yeah, then I the, got, one, the one you mentioned tomorrow never knows. That's true. That's, that's my all-time favorite. That's a fucking killer. It's thing. brilliant. It, it, you're on acid in that song. Yeah. They brought the acid to you. That was the first time you ever tripped. The first time you hear well, that I song. I think it, I don't know. You have to check it. I think that was the first time John Lennon took acid, maybe. Well, they went to India or something. I don't know. I'm not a big historian. No, because I, I I'm a big Beatles historian. They um, I heard a. Uh, um, the Beatles were at a party in L.A. or something, and they took acid for the first time. And uh, oh, there's a song she said. You know that one? Yes. She said, "I know, I know what it's like to be dead." Is uh, Henry Fonda? They were all on acid at some party. Henry Fonda walked up to John Lennon and goes, "I know what it's like to be dead." And John Lennon just took it and put it in that song. Yeah, that's yeah. Those old fucking party days, you know. No, a lot of people don't even. I would, yeah, I would listen to Revolver, the White Album. I definitely get Let It Be. Yeah, isn't it weird that Let It Be started as their worst album? I think it's one of their best. No, I, I like it. I like the it's great. You know, I haven't had the physical Beatle albums, which now I'm going to start going and buying physical Beatle albums. Next time I go to Burbank, I'm going to buy some physical Beatle albums. It's time. You're absolutely right. I've neglected them over the years. Netflix. Well, I got you back into it. Well, it's important to on a podcast to. Uh, Sell some Beatles records. Um, it's funny because I'm trying to do a podcast right now. It's kind of falling apart, but I did. I'm doing like call-in guests, and I was talking to Bill Burr, who's the fucking funniest guy ever. He was a Wheeler fan, so I'm like, maybe he'll do the podcast. He was nice enough to call in. Who knows if this podcast will ever come out? But I was telling him he's like talking about like young wannabe artists, like what they should be into. I just got this. Uh, it's like thirty-something disc set of uh, Dylan on tour with the with the band in 66 playing the most killer rock and roll you ever heard and uh getting booed off the fucking stage every night i don't know if you remember that that no but uh he put when he went from folk to electric they fucking booed him on stage and i've got someone for my birthday last year gave me it's a it's a it's a box set of every every show they played on that tour and every show Dylan starts folk acoustic, and then they move. The band comes on, and they play electric. And you've never heard killer music like this. And they get booed. For, it's like keeps helps keep things in perspective, you know. First of all, the band, yeah, is one of the best bands. Yeah, and that's that people the, don't know about. That's another thing. People, you know, I played them one time, and people insulted me. Yeah, I feel like they don't get their due a lot of the time. Listen, Neil Young doesn't exist anymore. What is that noise? It's going. Let me see. No, it's not no fucking it's your... see. It's something in that thing. That's why I told you to lower this, lower the mics a little bit. Can you can you get a little closer? Uh, no, no, just lower the mics a little bit. Even if I'm far away, look how I'm far away right here, and they can hear it. Lower the mics a little bit. Okay. There you go. Because that thing's buzzing the fuck out. You're. Are you listening over there? What are Maybe, you? listen, you saw him, he almost fucking died. Yeah, yeah I, know, I know that a little bit. He's okay. probably hearing that on his own. Is that, yeah. How you doing, man? I'm, I'm doing good. He's ready for another bunk. That's the problem. Yeah, I don't know if I want to watch, though. Sure, you want, everybody wants to watch Lee do another bunk. Look at him, he's panicking already and shit. He forgets <laughs> that we get the weed that killed Lucifer. You fucking forget. You don't train on, and I know you got weed at your house. Don't tell me you don't. I have weed at the house. You yeah. have at least a half what ounce do you not at the house. What happened? Do you only smoke here? Is that the deal? I eat, I eat edibles at home, but I don't smoke at home really. No, oh, his Why girlfriend would beat him up. Oh if my he god, I smoke. I, I smoke all the time. He I doesn't eat. smoke. See, he, 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 I, smoke I took all only. Time. I took like I could, what, one I or two like, hits of this, and I'm fucking. About if he to, smoked that die. night, if he went on the balcony at night, his girlfriend would beat him fucking senseless if he went out there and smoked right now. He has no idea. When I'm when he's over here, he eats ten thousand stars, and he's over there. I, I thought thirteen fifty. Yeah. 
I ate 1,600 um, when? on Saturday. And what did you eat tonight? I, I don't know. Two ah, of those things. You better eat those stars. Yeah, when I said I was coming on here, I got 8 million tweets like, Watch the fucking Death Stars, man. Watch the Stars of Death. And stars of Death, yes. Why you don't? Why are you not training tonight? What do you think? We forgot about this. I've been training. Well, well eat, you gotta eat like half the bag now because you only got five hundred milligrams in you. Only. That's nothing. You could. That's a walk in the park. That's a good man. amount. It's different when no one has. When you told the the girl at the store that someone had two of the TKO, she almost passed out. No, she didn't. She's nothing. <laughs> you can do two TKOs and you sleep like ten of those. Just to balance you out. You got like 10 ready to rock. Look at you. You got to keep this crinkling. Is pre, this is peer, peer pressure, man. This is, he's a fucking savage, but he don't want to train no more. Come on, man. Don't get soft on me. I would, I would never do that to you, Wheeler. Thanks, dude. Don't even get me started on the Periscope debacle. <laughs> if you think the Kennedy assassination is fucked up, you don't want to hear about the Periscope debacle. What was the Periscope debacle? Well, he faked stars and made them double. How dare you? All right, and Wheeler. Then, and I call him on the no, way No, I home. want to figure this out. He doesn't get high. I call him at 2. He's over there singing songs, watching Parks and Rec. And then the next day, I give him 10 stars here, and you thought he saw the fucking the devil. Uh, he was here till 4 in the morning. He barfed. He ordered pizza. I didn't barf. No, not that night. He ordered pizza. Have you taken enough edibles to barf? How many uh, stars times, did you yeah. eat? How many stars? I haven't eaten any yet. So what are you keep, waiting for? You keep telling, to, to, accusing me of... Just empty the goddamn bag. Jesus. You ain't five. Come on, man. You? Yeah, you're playing games. What's the problem here? You ate 500 milligrams of TK. That doesn't do nothing to you. Sure, it doesn't do you anything. Gotta, you got to mix them up. What, what, what's those last two in your hand? I, I can't. I don't stick eight just of them in my mouth. Just put five you know. in your mouth and drink it. Let these <laughs> intestines do the rest. That's what I do. That's why I don't chew them. Just throw them in your mouth and drink the water over them and watch it. Dude, you're not one of those pussies who chews, is he? Yeah, he, and then he gets sick. And that's why I try to tell him, just drink, the, eat the whole star whole. How are you going to swallow this thing? This thing is Two like... Of them. I can eat three of those fucking things. What? Just throw them in your mouth and just drink the juice after it and watch what happens. Let the intestines do the work. Poor Lee, man. Lee's a savage of death. This is what he does on the weekends. They go, they hold hands, he eats one star. He tells people he ate 13 milligrams. Shit, man, is he going to barf on me? No, I'm not going to barf. No. Okay. <laughs> Trust me, you'll know. I'll, I'll make a noise. You know, I, I know, I'll know, but I don't We wonder. did a podcast last week on Wednesday. I, I must have got 20 fucking things about all the noises he made that night. Like when he gets really high, you'll hear little noises. That's probably what the noise was. It's <laughs> That's his what it stomach. Was. Yeah, he's fucking no. He only ate the turn. My intestines burning. He the didn't whole. eat. He didn't. Well, eat. He the, hasn't. The eaten. audience missed it, but right before we went on, this guy. I've never seen a cough like this. This dude coughed. For fucking 30 minutes. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> when was the last time you had a transmission fluid? Uh, it's been a few weeks. Yeah, and so you're used to these. So. Uh, so I'm not used to these. No, you're used to the star one because you haven't gone outside. What did, the what did you choke on? Was it the pipe or the bong? I choked the, I, bong. the bong. He he likes putting all the dark weed underneath it. What's the dark? What's the dark weed? That weed that everyone's There's already, no oh, fucking it's, dark yes, weed. Yes, it is. It's, it's the one that everyone's already smoked, and that's why that's why you. I don't know how you don't call. All right, well, I'm gonna fill it up with brand new weed for you, right? So you'll see. Well, that. I want to know what the black weed is. The black weed is what he calls smoked weed. Like if you take. <laughs> How is that worse? It's the same shit. Right, don't listen to him. It's all. Okay. It's all. Yeah, Lee, you're fucking me up. Why do you listen to him? He confuses people. He confuses the people. I thought he was. Listen, part of the that's game. all you need. That's all you need to know, right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's all you need. He confuses the people in Periscope. This is brand new fucking weed. Check this out. Go ahead. There you go. All right. Go for broke, Lee. This is the one that killed Abdullah. No, 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 Lee, Lee, Lee. Because now he's oh. gonna complain that it's dark weed. Uh, no, I'm not. First yes, of all, he is. He's going to complain. That, that I'm going to cough. Dude, you just took I'm, it out of my fucking mouth. Dead anyways. Let me put some more water on this. He don't need no water because you're going to flood it. It's perfect how it is. Yeah. You can perfect. Don't touch you, nothing. You, okay. you can all cough right. plenty off Yeah, okay. don't touch nothing. In fact, the, you, you left drool in there before, so you, it gained an ounce. <laughs> oh, gross. No, nah, I'm only teasing you. Go ahead. Hit that fucking soldier. It's, it's Monday. It's the end of fucking March. That's it. That's it. There you go. Oh, shit, is he going to do it again? Oh, please. This is the one that killed Lucifer. No, <laughs> here you go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> now now he turns the volume down. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking dro- Dude. Oh. Jesus Christ. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to kill this fucker. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happened before. It's been his plan for years. Yeah. 
<laughs> at least you know the ending to this. Most podcasts don't have an ending. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know the this, ending. That's a total one. Uh, we're going to shoot heroin for New Year's. And he's, and you're, we're going to get a nurse to come in here. Give you know us how like long a... it'll take you to <coughs> convince him to do heroin? I'm going to oh. say four minutes. <laughs> I'm not doing heroin. <laughs> Oh, Put it in a fucking in a gummy form. He'll he'll shoot it. He won't know. He won't know nothing. Yeah. Hilarious. He's my dog. He knows I love him. He fucks around. I gave him weed. I said, stay in training. When I go out of town, hit this before you go to the gym. Just one time. He don't smoke. He don't listen. So that's what happens. He turns pro. You see that before? Yeah, I saw. So, dro- I saw drool down to his fucking. Oh, dick. it was hysterical. He was done, but he's all right now. He ba- what's what's going on with those stars? I eat three stars. I, I think I'm okay. Three stars don't do nothing. That's 850. What's that going to do to you? That's not, that doesn't even give you a headache. It's not even worth the gelatin. You might as well kill that bag. You're a soldier. It's Monday night. Come on, man. And Monday night, you set the... T- t- listen. Monday night, you set the fucking... Door. Even I drank tonight. I drink one beer. I get fucking hammered. I got no alcohol resistance. I'll drink another one. Yeah, do it for a uh, fucking wheeler. For the South. Yeah. No, if you're not doing it for yourself, do it for the South. Do it for Kentucky, yeah. Do it for Kentucky. Someday you're going to go to Kentucky, and they're going to see you on the street and go, you're Lee Syatt. You ate a bunch of stuff. Do they like Jews in Kentucky? They got tons of them. Yeah. Tons? Oh, please. They're all over the place. They even got a Cuban restaurant in Lexington. What is it? I don't know. (laughs) You got to look it up. I'll check it out. It's by the college. It's a fun little place. It smells a little greasy, but it does the trick. I'm just trying to think about it. They fry bananas and shit in there, so... The Cuban oh, the, what's it called, plantains? Yeah, they're good. I, mean, I love was, that shit, yeah. But they got four Cuban restaurants, supposedly, in Louisville. Yeah, I don't go to Louisville much. Do you play there in Louisville? We, yeah, we actually, the, my last tour, right before I did record the new record, I got, I'd never really toured much, and I fucking, I got, I got fucking lead. I got, I got so sick. <clears throat> I'd never been on the road that long, and I think it was just too much, many nights of getting fucked up, and. Yeah, make some more noise with that fucking bag, cocksucker. Yeah. Turn it upside down and go like this with your fingers. All the way to like fucking... Like finger bang it, and they'll, they'll fall out. But you're working against the gravity. There you go. All the way to the valley. Emerson to Collins, fucking five up. fucking years. There you go. There it you was, go. They were stuck at the top. I had to finger bang. That's what the noise was when we finger bang. Uh, <laughs> let me show you. Five. That's all you need. That's the, the party started. How many did you eat already? This is... Uh, I'll, Seven. Seven, that's it. No, the, <laughs> seven, that's it, man? Sure. Dude, Monday eat night. the bag, eat the bag. <clears throat> eat the bag, it's Tuesday night. That's it, it's Easter. You're the anti-Lent. <laughs> How'd it become Tuesday all of a sudden? Because by the time you wake up, it'll be Tuesday. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You'll be fine. Now, what's the difference to you between Louisville and, like, Lexington? Louisville's a big city compared to Lexington. Lexington's yeah, where the but college is. I mean, I think... Uh, like you were saying before, it's all it's South is so sports oriented, you know, it's like you tend you hate Louisville when you're in Lexington because of, you hate the Cardinals and you love the Wildcats. Which doesn't happen out here, you know, it's like it's all sports related. You hate fucking Patino, and, you know. But you love it's very um there's probably a um there's a um what's the word I'm looking I'm, you got me too fucking stone. Well, you know, they, they 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 go at each other. You know, it's like, oh, you're a Louisville guy now. Lexington ain't good enough. You know, so I don't know. I don't go, I don't go to Louisville that much because it didn't seem like an, enough of a step. Up, you, you know, it's like it's a little bit. It's like the same city. Now, is this the first time you're gonna be performing in New York, or you performed in New York before? We did one show in New York and on the last go? tour. It was good. It Tremendous. Was, it was a real. It was a real small place. It was like 250 people, and we sold it out pretty fast. And this one's, I think, twice as big. Hopefully we can sell it out. I don't know. But like I said, I, I fucking... Even then, in this last tour, I fucking flipped out. Well, that's what we were getting to, that right now your second album's coming out. It'll be successful. I hope you're right. And all of a sudden, your agent will call you and say, listen, it's time to get a bus and do a 12-week tour. Da, 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 da. And you know... You and your guys are excited, you know, and you do it. And listen, right away I'm crying because I shouldn't be fucking crying. People like Led Zeppelin, not even Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath went on the road for like three years and recorded on the road, didn't they? I mean, they were fucking animals. They didn't stop. Well, I know guys who do that. They, yeah, but, they don't stop. But that fucking, that's the thing is that bus costs fucking 20 grand a day. I mean, I, know if I have friends who have those big buses, but you got to make good money to pay for that You have to make fucking. a lot of money to cover expenses. 
That and bus is so fucking expensive. And, you know, people don't realize how hard the road is, you know, like how hard it is. When you're a kid, it sounds like fucking No, when, when you're, you're a kid, there. it's like nothing. When you're a kid, you can do anything eight nights a fucking week. You know, when you're a kid, you can sleep on a couch and nothing happens what's to the, you. What's the longest you've gone on the road as a comic? November to April. Well, that's pretty fucking long. Without going home at all? No, I would send clothes home. And I did that three times. When I moved to Los Angeles in 98, I found holes in my game. And I pretty much stayed out from 98. What do you mean by holes in your game? I just had holes in my game, man. Like I wasn't. And you went out to fix it. I was it. funny, but I didn't really get the concept of the set and a bunch of little things. I got put in between Nick DiPaolo and Doug Stanhope. And I ate a bag of dicks. And I had to walk off the stage and watch both of them destroy well and I said you know what I need to get seasoned I need to get some legs under me so I would do it old school style I would just like book five out of six weeks have like a week off and I'd go and from there i start hawking. and could you feel it like oh I'm getting I'm, I'm, I'm better now like, I, I... oh when I come back here six seven months later yeah because I do a combination of everything. I do a combination of one-nighters, which toughens your skin, and I do good rooms to shave off the fat. That's smart. So, because what happens if you do a bunch of one-nighters and come here, you're gonna have to shave off that fat eventually from different spots. Uh, you Like, let's say I'm from Nashville, right? I got 35 minutes, but I got 15 minutes on Nashville. That shit don't work. In Tupelo, Mississippi. Totally. So you just lost 15 minutes, chap. So you better hip hop and start pen penciling those 15 minutes. Well, it's funny you say minutes. that because I did, I did Corolla this morning and I, they want us to perform live. I did a song live and I was like, my voice sounded like shit because I hadn't been on the road or been in the studio forever. And there's nothing to, there's no training you can do other than just playing on, just going out and playing for five months. That's the only training you can have. But the, the, my singing on the new record to me sounded awesome because I was, I'd just gotten off the road for f four months on the road. I was like, "How do I get my voice back to that shape?" You just got to go. You just got to go back and start. There's no, there's no, there's no warm-ups or anything. No, you could do the exercises. I know that vocalists do certain exercises. Yeah, my, I have my goose. And work. Go 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 go. You go, know, go go go. And people doesn't do work shit. with vocal coaches. But even that, it's, it's nothing is com close to f being out just there doing live. it. Yeah, the timing, the audience, the exposure. No, no, no. It's and that's. I knew to get better, you couldn't do hip crowds. You know, when you first start off comedy, you want to do New York and Vegas and Los Angeles. But you really have to learn how to perform in Buffalo on a cold night. You got to really learn how to perform in uh, uh, Indiana. What's, you know? So what's your biggest city? Sorry if I'm asking the questions, but like, what's your, what's your best city? Like, where do, you, where do you do the best? By podcast standards... San Francisco. No, but like as far as getting a crowd to your shows. Oh, anywhere where this podcast reaches, we'll get a crowd. These people are fucking savages. Really? Yeah, these people are savages. Well, where it reaches, it reaches everywhere. I've done shows in Paducah, and I've had people fucking show up in Little Paducah, which is great. I've done shows in Jackson, had 60, 70 people show up. They've driven in from Nashville or... You know, yeah, you that's know. how you start getting the big audiences when they drive. Yeah, you know, I, I Nashville, I get good numbers, but you have to learn how to cut your teeth in those little towns. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to how for me to wake you up at eight in the morning and go, Wheeler, come on, we got a ten hour drive to our next city. Well, I remember the f the first night of my first tour, we had a we had a five a.m. radio interview. I woke up at eleven, and I called up the radio station. I'm like, are we late? Can we still come in? I'm like, they're like, you're fucking six hours late. There's yeah. been three shows since you fucking the show you made, and you're never allowed on this radio station again. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, know. once you burn the bridge, you're done. Fuck them. Like, fuck this station. But I, that sleep was more important to me than any fucking radio station. Well, you know, this is it. Like this, this week I gotta get up at four. The car picks me up at four thirty. For what? To go to the airport. I get to the airport. I fly to New York. Fucking Thursday morning, I got to do radio at 8 a.m., which is 5 a.m. L.A. time. That's crazy. And then Friday, I'm probably going to have to do something. And Saturday, you sleep all day because my Sunday, my Saturday night flight, I got to be there at fucking, uh, 
I think like 4.45. Back here? No, I got to be at Kennedy Airport by 4.45. the flight is to back here. Yeah, so I'm pretty much getting off stage, going back to the room, laying down for an hour. I'll be packed and everything, and I get right in the fucking car, and I'm back here. Yeah, that's no, I mean, it, it's a life, but it's kind of tough. I only do it twice a month. Okay. Okay, I'm 54. I got to take care of myself. That shit every week that they call you with and go, you have to go there. I don't have to do nothing. I just got a call that I'm playing Vegas this weekend. They sent me a flyer. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking? There's a picture, there's a flyer of me with these two girls on it. Like, where's the band? Who should, like, who fucking booked? What the fuck's going on? Did your agent contact you? They, I heard I heard rumors of it, but I heard, I saw the flyer way before I agreed right, to anything. Right, so nobody confirmed. They just yeah. offered, they said, we'll offer you, what do you think? You said, I'm available, we'll call you back. And all of a sudden, there's a flyer, and there's tickets being sold. And I have no fuck. I got to check up on it. Yeah, no, no, no. That's, that's how fast this goes. Yeah. It moves fucking fast, you know? It's funny because before we came on the podcast, we were talking about scams, people who... And then sang- I fell for one of the other... Well, send, I almost fell for it. People who send you shit on the computer, and we were talking about how dumb do you have to be? Are we getting dumber? You know, like, what the yeah. fuck is going on, you know? Which we, we never really answered. We said we're going to answer on the podcast. But... I don't know if we're getting dumber. I think we're putting a lot of trust in the internet Yeah. at times. I don't even like purchasing. My wife handles all that stuff, but I don't type numbers into a fucking thing. Yeah, what I was saying is I got an email the other day and that saying that one of my email passwords was uh, someone had, had, that I needed to change it. So I check, click on the email, it asked my name, I put it in, they asked my email address, I put it in, then they asked my, um, for my credit card information. I was about, I seriously had taken my credit card out. I was about to type it and I go, you know what? There's no email place that needs your credit card to change your email password and i put it put it down like you know it's like i was that close to being that one of those fucking dumb fucks who you know it's, you're not you're never that fucking far away well you have to think about it. lee said he got the call from the irs people yeah What's that? i got that a couple of years like the first year that i w- didn't have a job they called me and they said uh it was like an automated message and they're like contact your uh representative or we rec- recommend you get an attorney uh, you owe such and such to the IRS, and I got I got paranoid. But l- luckily now with Google, you just look it up, and they and like the IRS even has a thing on their website that says, uh, "We will never call you. It's always going to be through the mail." Because so many they just they just Did busted you, one of the places in India. They just well, but what, what were they trying to do to you? They they want you to uh, they probably call you and want to like have you pay what you supposedly owe to the IRS or. Immediately, or the cops are going to come to your house and arrest you for right. your children. They had the scam on 2020 or one of those 60 minutes. Uh, it's fucking mind boggling. Mind boggling how much money people sent. Like without even fucking thinking. Like, really? Someone you, told I don't me those, those, those junk mail things. Well, like you were saying before we went on the air, it was like, you only need a few people to send in some checks. Listen, I tell this story. This is one of the greatest stories I've ever heard about the American, because it's like when I was a kid, there was an, a, a, a guy named Peter Lemon Jello. Nobody ever heard of Peter Lemon Jello. But ABC, late night, had a commercial, the best of Peter Lemon Jello. Nine ninety nine. this guy sings all the songs. Nobody knew who Peter Lemon Jello is. What the fuck's Peter Lemon Jello? This is what I'm saying. Can you please look up who the fuck Peter Lemangelo is? I'll never forget this. Peter Lemangelo was this singer that nobody knew about. And all of a sudden, they had the best of Peter Lemangelo. And he covered six or seven songs. And, like, it was the biggest scam of all fucking time. Oh, he was, was he made up? I think I have the commercial. Play it, yeah. This is fucking crazy. This. But they did this other thing. This I, I watched this on, like, some TV show 15 years ago. Like, HBO Late Night. This dildo company put an ad out, and they would have, and it wasn't Playboy. It wasn't none of the high-level porno magazines. It was like a medium-level one where chicks show their assholes and shit like that. And the back page, they had this dildo that came with water and steam and smoke and no batteries. You charged it. They must have had, it was twenty four ninety five. They must have had 2,000 orders. The first three months or something weird, and then a couple thousand after that. What this company did, they didn't even have a dildo. Didn't even have a dildo. 
they would take your money, put it in the bank, and then cut you back a check that said, we don't have the, yeah, the thing check, available. But the check says it's from a dildo company. No, they have a dildo on the check. This is way before the ATM machine. You know what I'm saying? Well, so you, gonna, you wouldn't go in. You, you're too embarrassed to check. Yeah, who's going to cash this check with a dildo? Dude, that's the fucking, fucking genius. So they made fucking millions. They banged people out, and some people reported it. But this was Peter Lemon Jello. Look at this. Peter Lemon Jello. Do I love you? 76. You Watch for it. You are about to witness a new dimension in entertainment. Peter Lemon Jello. Oh, I could have been <laughs> totally sure. a million things. Peter Lemon Jello. A mood rock experience called Love 76. Yes, Peter Lemongello has created a new kind of music that's both romantic and moving. Just listen. Uh, sounds terrible. Can you believe this shit? So he didn't, would this guy not really even exist? No. Nobody played, nobody ever heard of Peter Lemon fucking joke. I know a lot about music. I never fucking No, heard. nobody ever knew about Peter. They just put it out there at night, and they figured it cost them nothing to fucking get the commercial. But were there songs it? on it? Yeah, like songs like he like he had one song that he probably wrote. Maybe just covers. Yeah. And the worst, is like that dude in Vegas. Who the fuck goes to see that guy singing people's songs? The guy from Vacation. I would never go see that fucking guy in a million years. Which guy is that? That dude who fucks the mother in Vegas. What's his name that's been there for 2,000 years? The, he thinks he's Elvis. He was Elvis. Elvis used to bit slap. Wayne Newton. Oh, yeah. With that fucking costume on. I'm going to pay $20 to see Wayne Newton sing fucking by Tom Jones songs. Get the fuck out of here. I don't have time for that shit. But this was all the little, I call them American ingenuity scams. And they it's, still it's, it's fucking smart to do that. No, when you go, yeah, no, I went to, I took my date out to dinner. I'm, the, I'm my wife, my date. I took my wife out to dinner. Dude, we had to walk through a mall. So I go, listen, on the way out, we'll get Mercy shoes here. The baby, get a pair of sneakers. They had sneakers there. When we stood in line, I saw all those things that they sell on TV late night. So, the, you know, like, we have uh, stores of them as seen on TV. Now. Oh, yeah, I've seen what, do you, what do you call that shit? Uh, as seen on TV? No, 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 they had something for your wrist that you'll never use. You know, like, like the biggest scam of all time is the self massager. You're never gonna use that. There's no self massager. I gotta stretch my arm to get the bottom of my fucking back. I'm twisting my shoulder <laughs> to massage that gun. It, it ain't gonna work. None of those things work. But they'll advertise, you know, the, the, the cop and knee brace. That shit comes on at 9 o'clock at night. Fat people are there. You know what? If I get that cop and knee brace, maybe I'll exercise. No, you won't. But you'll drop the 2395. That shit don't work. That cop will fucking knee brace. No, I had one of those. I didn't order it from there. Somebody gave it to oh, me. Oh, I've ordered that shit. I've ordered that shit on fucking TV, though. What's the thing you put in your door that you do? Pull up? Yeah, yeah. And what happened? Well, no, I was I was stoned, and I'd taken an Ambien. I woke <laughs> up the next morning, and there's a fucking box in my door. Or two days later, there's a box in my door with a fucking pull-up machine i use i've t i've literally done one pull-up in six years no you don't use none of that shit yeah. you're never going to use all that buying stuff you're never going to use none of that apparently shit. apparently when i was fucked up i thought i needed to get you know now does ambien really make you black out like that no yeah no i forget shit yeah all with the time. booze or just straight i don't to straight i don't i try not to mix it with booze it's not good for you but um when i take it yeah i'll, I'll fucking what will happen is i'll wake up the next morning and there'll be a text from a girl it's like you know what time tonight? And I'll, I'll read through the text. And say, I'll be like, a girl I haven't talked to for years. Like, we should we should hang out. I was on Ambi. I don't remember. I was like, me and you. It's like this friendship. Why are we friends? We need to take you to the next level. I like I get this fucking uh, like I uh, get really cocky on Ambien, I guess. And I wake up and I gotta you know, it's almost like I should take Ambien to take her out, to be back to that guy. You know, it's like a. I act like a you know. I just start texting girls on the all fucking. I don't remember it at all. They say people have bought cars and cooked meals. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. On Ambien and not knowing what the fuck the next day they've woken up and there's. I think my, my subconscious wanting pussy, maybe. 
Oh, everybody's subconscious wants pussy. As soon as you, you smoke a joint in your late night, you want a piece of ass. You're like, man, I can't. Yeah, I take that Ambien. Like I said, the next morning, it's just my phone is a bunch of texts of, from all the night before. It's like. Speaking of uh, scams, though, have you? Do you guys like, ever get worried about the credit card ones, like the machines? They Always. Up? Like, do you check? I yes. Don't, I don't check. I like, pull what? them out. I hit them at the gas station. I cover the fucking number because there's people with telescopes. You got to assume. Oh yeah. What are you? You got to assume. You got to assume all that shit when you go to a store and you stick your credit card. Listen, when you stick your credit card in the machine, you're doomed. It's like we were discussing. Uh, you ever go to an airline, Southwest, an yeah. airline? And they say, put your ID in or your credit card. Everything's in your credit card, too. Date of birth, address, how old your kid is. Everything's in that fucking credit card. So when you put them at the gas stations and all that shit, every time you use that out, like I have a work credit card, and then I have a credit card. They could steal the work credit card. You ain't going to get dick out of that. That goes in small increments. That's why I yeah, use Yeah, that's it. why I have two. I have a work credit card. And then I have one that I use at restaurants, whatever the fuck. But I have a work credit card. And then we have one universal. What, what were you talking about covering it up? What was that? You cover it up. You When you hit the numbers, you always got to be fucking safe, especially today. Oh, shit. There's always some motherfucker that's cute. Or you have to assume. Have you seen the videos of them putting the the? They have machines that look like the yeah, yeah, scanner yeah, yeah. machines, and they just they put it on and it, it fits right on, and it just has a little chip and it transmits all the data. It's crazy. It's where, crazy. Where is it? Where do they have those? It, it, uh, it, it, At ATM machines and stores. Yeah, like a basically a fake ATM. You put it in the machine on top. That's why when you before you stick your card in, always grab that thing and pull it out. Oh shit! I didn't know. Listen, every time you go to Vegas, within two months, you're going to charge from Vegas. I don't know how they do it. Well, I know people who go to Vegas, and two weeks later, their account is clean that. And you think back, where did you go? You went to Vegas. All those things in Vegas, because everybody who goes to Vegas, you either go to gamble or to scam people out of their money. More reason to cancel that gig. This week. No, you got to go to Vegas and do the gig. But when you go to Vegas, you got to be very careful. You know, I was a thief. I know hotel really? rooms. Yeah. That's what kind right. of shit you do? Everything. Every low what's life. Cra- what's the craziest shit thing you do? That won't get you in too much trouble. No, I robbed drug dealers and shit like that. But for a while, I worked hotel rooms. They're very easy. Now I can't do it. Now you can't do it. But back in the day, I would just wait. I would just wait for a hotel. I would go to a hotel dressed up in a fucking suit with a Wall Street Journal. Like I was going to meet a friend there, and I'd say, what time does the... I'd, I'd contact, and then when they weren't looking, I'd slip in and go through up to the third floor. <coughs> I'm the type of guy in those days that I would watch a maid, and, I, and a lot of maids would put the keys in the door and leave the keys in the door and go in the fucking hotel well, room. Because I leave all my shit in the hotel. People, yeah, that's n- got, it's got to be a gold mine. No, there, right? no, no, no. Listen, in hotels, A, room, room number one, I never... Nobody goes in my room. You don't need to clean my room, though. Which is what do not disturb all the time? All the time. No That's thing. not really a deterrent for a thief. No, 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 no. But why have people eyes knowing what you have that don't aren't supposed to know? That's how it's done. I worked security at the Crestwood when I was a kid at 19, and you have no idea. And I was I was the bad one. What's the Crestwood? The Crestwood was a hotel in Snowmass Village, and I was security. There was two of us from 5 to 1. <coughs> We had to walk around and drive people to the airport and pick them up and shit like that. And there was another guy that was there. The guy that got me the job was a bigger thief than I was. He was scamming it from two ways. He would watch you coming in. He knew you put money in the safe at the fucking hotel. So he would watch when you went skiing and he'd get the key from the... No, 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 no. no. You don't trust nobody. That's how you have to... When you go to a hotel, nobody. Well, that's my thing all the time. Nobody. When we play gigs, it's like... Do I Nobody. leave it in the hotel or backstage at the gig? Nobody. Both of them are shit. No, no, no. I don't fuck around. The, you know, we were talking about... Do What do you do What do you do with it then? Hotel safe or nothing? I take everything with me. Just keep it. Listen, keep it you want to steal my fucking computer from 10 years ago that I want to throw out a window every two weeks? Go ahead, take it. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no nude pictures in there. There ain't dick in there. In fact, I got two Gmail accounts with a podcast, and they're different computers. My house podcast... My house computer gets different emails than the Gmail on the road. I'll, I'll go on the road. Like now, I haven't been on the road for three weeks. I open up that fucking computer. There's 2,000 emails. It's the weirdest fucking thing. So you could rob, what are you going to rob my clothes? 
My iPod is one of those portable iPods. I buy those cheap ones so they fall on planes. With the circle thing? Yeah. The speakers, you could take those little fucking ear pods. So anything important you keep on you? Yeah. Your Gitas, your credit card, your fucking license, and your phone. You keep on you. What else do you want to have on you? You got a ring and a chain, you put it on. You go yeah, to the I gym, guess, you take yeah. it out, and you put it in a... I try to not take anything too nice with me on... The, well, my thing is, too, is it's harder for musicians is the instruments. So it's what makes yeah, a lot I've done it. things, Wheeler, that I can't believe I got away with. That this, this can't really be happening. Like, when I was out there robbing, you can't be this... Like, I was writing a joke the other day. Like I, I'm not, I wasn't really a thief. But if you're going to be that stupid, I had to rob you. <laughs> Like, if you're going to be that stupid, like, i got to rob you. Give me an example. I'm fascinated by this. I was in a supermarket once. I was fucking flat broke with my ex-wife. It was a Friday in Aspen. And we probably have 22 bucks for the weekend. We're buying, like, cold cuts and tuna fish and sodas. We were staying at a hotel on Main Street across from the In-N-Out sandwich shop. This is way not In-N-Out burgers. This is fucking In-N-Out burgers wasn't even a thought. And I'm, I'm in this fucking supermarket, and I see this fucking lady going through the products, reading the caloric intake, and shit, you don't need to fucking know, just grab the fucking product. With her purse on the place where you put produce, and an envelope sticking out. And I just timed it. It's just like a fighter. When you're a thief, you just time. As soon as she goes back, the timing, and I just zipped the fucking envelope, popped it, walked around the corner with 600 bucks in there. No if you're going to be that stupid, I'm going to take it. I, I I got stuck in Santa Monica today. I'm not proud of this. I'm not proud of this at all. And this will answer a lot of questions for the people in the podcast. There was a time I would walk into fucking Toys R Us with my four-year-old daughter at the time. I'd walk in there with 60 bucks. I'd leave there with a bicycle and $600 worth of toys. Doing what? Without walking out of the fucking uh, toy store. That was a time when I was in... You know how, you know how they have this, How'd you do that? In those days, fake returns. You know, there was a time... You know, they, they did this movie last year about Back Out of Compton, with a Fresh Out of Compton. What's the name of it? Straight Out of Compton. Straight Out of Compton. Yeah. And it's a great movie. I love it. I like Back Out and of they, Compton. And they, they talk about... Fresh Out of Compton. They talk about him financing his early career with drug money. My early comedy career, 93, 94, 95, 96, I was a professional shoplifter. If it didn't have fucking screws on it, it I took it. Do, what, do you think there was a, uh, I don't give a fuck, fuck the world attitude that allowed you to do that? Oh, yeah. There was a, there was a certain Cause, anger. Because what you're saying right now makes me like want to do it, but like... No, I could no. see years ago, like when I was like, if you don't give a fuck and you're fucking pissed off. No, I know. was angry at the world. I wasn't happy with myself. You know, I, I had a low fucking esteem of myself. I didn't really give a fuck. I was getting into comedy. I'd been divorced. I'd already been to prison. I had nothing to lose anymore. I remember one day I go to pick up my daughter and it's Christmas Day. And I got $20. I got toys for her. That was the easy thing. But now I had to get decorations. So I fucking took, like, Christmas decorations and duct taped them to the wall and a bunch of fucking Christmas things. And I got to go get a tree. And I'll never forget this. I went to the Kmart. And next to the Kmart, there was a tree lot. And as I walk up, you're not going to believe this. There's an envelope, and it says, pick a tree and put the money and checks in the fucking thing. I reach my hand in there, two, three hundred dollars. Who knows? That's how I ate dinner that fucking... You know, I went back eight months later... And gave the guy the money. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Like, that's the old school. But at that day, that helped me out. Why would somebody leave envelopes out there and leave? You know, I didn't take the checks. I just took the cash. We were talking. We were pitching today in, uh, in FX. And we were talking about the character, the Jew attorney. And I was telling him. Played by Lee? We're trying. <laughs> and I was telling them a story that I got a job at the Alpine Country Club. I was fresh out of the bartending school. I worked at the Sheridan Center, and they gave me a job. They got me. The only way you can work at the Sheridan Center is by being trained at a bartending school at the time. This is 1984. 
So they paid for your training. It was 200 bucks for two weeks. You learn how to pull drinks. It's bullshit. Yeah. But when you're 18, you really believe it. Like, I'm going to go to bartending school and make 400 a night, you know, whatever. But when I got suspended from the fucking Sheridan, I didn't tell the American bartending school. And part of their deal is nationwide placement for the rest of your life. If you go to the American bar, if the American bartender school still exists, if you go there, you get nationwide and they have uh, schools all over the country. So when you move into the area, you go to that school and they'll give you fucking job placements if they have it. I wonder if I took one day of bartending (coughs) class. I couldn't. Everybody did. Everybody wanted to be a bartender for everybody. Everybody saw that movie with Tom Cruise and told him to throw bottles. I was going to get fucking pussy, but yeah. But I went to. I got a job at the. I got a call from the American bartender school, and they go, "Listen, I'm like, what a fucking god forbid." They go, "Go down to the Alpine Country Club. They're doing a banquet. You're a banquet bartender. You're gonna make twelve fifty an hour. Now at this time, I'm on the run. I'm hiding low in fucking uh, Fort Lee, New Jersey. I got people in North Bergen looking for me, and I'm still making my little moves to the city and shit. As long as I don't go back to North Bergen or around that area." And I'd work this fucking thing, and I see that there's a, they're giving the head bartender a key. And when people give him gifts, he's to put them in the back room. And what it was was a bar mitzvah. All right? And he went back there maybe a hundred times with envelopes and shit. I, he says to me, listen, I got to go upstairs and cater a party. I'll be back in like two hours. He left that key, that fucking Momo, on top of the register. Do you know what my low life twenty year old self did? I went into that, that dude. Room. That dude sounds like he was about to have a bad bar mitzvah. Dog, I opened up every fucking envelope and I took the cash out of the envelopes. The ones that had checks, I just left them in there, and the ones that had cash, I just took them. I think I scammed like twelve hundred bucks. Did they have a lot of ones in it? I don't remember. I walked straight out. Like I didn't finish the shift. That's how crazy I was. Like I didn't even care if they were gonna put it on me. Like, I didn't get what, what do you? Why were you not... What was the place you said you weren't allowed to go to? North Bergen. Why is that? I owed money for Coke. I owed too many people money for Coke. I'd robbed a few drug dealers. This is some fucking life. Man. This is craziness. But I went and I did this bar mitzvah. I still remember going to Harlem going, what the fuck is going on with my life? And I would go to Harlem and buy Coke and weed. And I became tight with the weed dealers. They were all Cuban refugees. And I go, what do you guys make out here? And they go, we sell 25 bags for $5 a piece. We keep $25. And I go, you got to give him $100? I couldn't fucking believe it. So I would always threaten them. One day I'm going to come out here and I'll sell all these. One day I go in and the leader goes, come here. I'm shorthanded today. I got to give you some weed. You have to sell it on the corner. He gives me a bundle, 25 nickel bags. I go, what do you want me to stand? He goes, you can stand anywhere you want. But if I was you, maybe go to the top of the corner. I went to the top of the corner and just started running. I just took off the fucking Port Authority. After I was, I was a savage. Yeah, damn. This is the kind of shit growing up in Kentucky you didn't think existed. Oh no, I was a savage. Fucking, you know. I was a savage with clothes on. Yeah. It was just a matter of time before somebody fucking shot me. Wheel. I'm very lucky. But did it come me, close to that? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you, ever, you had a gun pointed at you. Yeah. Am I getting too serious? No, I had a knife one time in, in Aspen. And I had a guy that came up to me that had a gun on him. That said, the next time, we were in broad daylight. And he goes, the next time I see you, I'm going to shoot you. Yeah, that shit don't happen too much where I'm from. John Wolf G, Jeff Warsaw, Jay, my man Jay from fucking Pittsburgh. I can't say your last name because you're a school teacher. Damian Gerard, Tim Norfolk, Mark Allen, Mike Ricks, and my main man always, Lauren Rosenker. I love you motherfuckers. Also, don't forget Levity Live this weekend starting Thursday night and 420 Levity Live Oxnard. So if you're in Nyack this weekend, come by. Or if you're in fucking Oxnard on 420 or Santa Barbara or anywhere in that area, I'll be at the uh, Levity Live Oxnard. Star One will be there giving out stars. Lee's going to eat like 52 of them that night. Dick Syatt's going to be visiting from Florida. We'll get in the hotel room. It's going to be all over, but the fucking shouting. You know, I was telling you guys before the podcast, I don't click on dick. And like when people send me all that shit online, but it goes back to how we were raised, Wheeler. 
I see people that shouldn't be talking to certain people. You ever see that? Like, uh, go to yeah. Hollywood I Boulevard. Can't, I still can't believe that you don't click on porn. Blow my mind. No, because that shit just jacks your computer. I can jerk off from fantasies. Oh. Okay. I can jerk off through fantasy well, and my mind fucks. Not, then. Yeah, no, 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 no. You don't know what goes on in that fucking... Years ago, I clicked on to something. I got 92 fucking things. Gay people were sending me notices. <laughs> I don't need none of that shit. In my Gay life. notice, yeah. So I don't click on the dick. I really don't. I don't click on the dick. When people send me stuff, redo your banking or retype your information, I just click it and take my chances. I don't... But it goes back to how I was raised because I see people... You ever go to Hollywood Boulevard? Yeah. And see fucked up people on there. And you see like a fucked up guy who stops tourists and is trying to scam. Like, why come from you don't even stop? Don't challenge him because he's going to get you. He's either going to get you or the guy down the corner is going to get you. They're going to weaken you by eight people approaching you. But if you don't stop, I don't stop at all. I never stop. So My mother would yeah, not let you me don't, stop. You don't, you don't learn this shit where I'm from, I guess. No, you don't I mean, stop. That's why New York City still freaks me out. Yeah, you don't stop. You keep walking. You don't make eye contact. I don't know what you're talking about. And if they really get in your mug, you're from another country. Especially Deutsch. You just say some two words and they go, oh, we're sorry. And you just keep fucking walking. You know how many times I'll, I'll talk Italian. I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying in Italian. You'll get a German one time and then you'll be fucked. No, I never said German. I never. You never speak no? No. I'll, I'll just, whatever the fuck they tell me they speak, I don't speak it at all. You know, I don't talk. I don't stop to talk because that's how they weaken you. Like young girls, like I'm gonna raise my daughter. You don't have to stop. Excuse me, can I? You don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. If you don't make the contact, nothing could happen. Nothing could happen. Well, what happened? I pulled over to help some guy, and he fucked me in the ass. Well, that's what you get for being a Christian. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get for being a fucking Christian. Oh, it's harsh, man. It's but it's the truth. When you see all these low-level scams people put on people on the internet, especially, I'm not, uh, what's the word? Internet sassy with scams. Savvy. Savvy, but I know I wouldn't put my fucking credit card and birth certificate in there. So, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, there's little things you know that you just can't do. You know, that's why I like Amazon. I trust Amazon. There's a couple companies you got to trust. You give them the work credit card. But somebody's probably fucking rip, gotten ripped off from Amazon. But yeah, I'm, I know. My, my mom did. My mom did. Someone stole... Her Amazon uh, gift card, like they broke, they broke into her account and ordered stuff, and then Amazon wouldn't give her the the uh, credit back. Never gave it back to her. She refuses to go to Amazon now because I don't of blame it. her. They fucked it. Yeah, it's, they uh, fucked it. And then and then that it's weird with that one because if you ever have to do a return, like you have to go and ship it, and and they, they don't have a number, you have to go back and give them your number. They call you. It's weird. So there's no perfect system anymore. No, I don't, uh, but it all goes back to that. Just don't get involved. You don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. I'm sorry. Well, I, need, uh, I needed these lessons when I was a kid. They, they talked to you. They called you, Mr. Wheeler, and said you would write this song. I don't know nothing. I don't know what you're talking about because people come up to you with assumptions also. That's the best. They come up to you with assumptions of things you're going to do. What I get all the time now is people, like, I don't know how they got my email or whatever, Facebook, like, Send me f lyrics and fucking song ideas, hoping that probably that I'll write one close to that so they can fucking sue me. But I gotta, I try to just delete it really fast. No, it's really quick how they have different. When the Death Squad thing started getting popular with Rogan, it's it 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 it, it got obscene how they would work each one of us. Like I would I would get on the plane and all of a sudden I would go, you know this guy named John Smith? Yeah, he keeps emailing me about a TV show. Yeah. You know, and they want to talk to Rogan. Ro Rogan don't want to talk to nobody. If you want to talk to Rogan, you got to call his manager. He don't take a call, an offer. He don't know nothing. You send Rogan an offer, and you just shot yourself in the fucking leg. And I got to be the same way because you got to cover yourself. You know, we try to be nice people. Yeah, come out to my birthday party. I'll give you the cash you want. And then you get there, and you got to sleep in the barn with the mule. Or, you know, you got to go meet the whole fucking oh, yeah, family. Yeah, all, all that fucking shit. Yeah, you got to get that about shit. Ten, how about 10 grand to play my birthday? Sounds good. Yeah, that's it. Or, or if it's, not, it's a fucking nightmare, Lee. So when people contact me, though, I don't even answer them back. You can contact me all you want about your fucking gigs. Go on IMDb and see who the fuck you got to contact and call them. That's your best shot. Because I got a wife and a kid, you know. I'm, I, I'm just not going to go to some fucking town and take my chances. 
I got to get covered, you know, the whole yeah. from fucking A to Z. And I say this because I've been burnt 30 times. I've been burnt 30 times. You know, you say that you learn from experience. What was the worst burn you got, you think? Like a thousand bucks when I really fucking needed it. And how'd they, how'd they get you? Um, No ticket sales, not enough ticket sales. There's always a bullshit oh, story. Yeah. But then that night, I got a knock on my door from the radio station. He ran out in the radio station, too. That was my fault. I got a deposit. I always got a deposit, and I got half of my deposit, when I, half of my pay when I got there. You know, a lot of clubs say they'll send a check. I'm like Chuck Berry, bitch. I leave with my cash. Yeah, you know, there's no reason to send me a fucking I, I check. I remember we were leaving a gig, and this guy wanted to uh, um, take his picture with me. He's like, I'm the promoter. And I, I was in the fucking van. I was like, I didn't want any fun. Like, I, I, had, I was there for three hours. Take a picture then, so just leave. Next day, my manager calls. He's like, there's like 80 fucking people on your Facebook page saying that you're, you were a cocksucker last night. It was that same dude who didn't get his picture taken. Like, blast, like covered my Facebook page in like fucking insults and shit. And then uh, I told my people, they're just like, don't ever book me at this fucking... It's just like, it was a way to like make me... It's trying to make me look like a fucking asshole. Like saying that like I was being a dick, but they were like claiming that I was being a dick backstage. Listen, two weeks ago I was where? Magoobies in Baltimore. The place seats 300, 400 fucking people per show. Okay? They have a certain area where you could mingle. You can't go out in between shows. You can't go out in between the first and second show. Because there's 700 people out there and it's all congested. They're trying to clean out the room. And these people want to take pictures. So last week, I didn't take pictures for the first show. Did I feel bad? Fuck yeah, I felt bad. But it's too much controversy. People don't get That's it. People business, don't yeah. want to fucking do it. People that, you know, like there's, there'll be a line for people coming out of the second show. And they'll be taking pictures. But then there'll be a line for people going into the first show. And they'll walk away from the line to take pictures. Instead of waiting until after the show... So then now there's an argument with them because they didn't fucking walk away from the line. It's always something. So the club will tell the club told me like a year ago. Different clubs said, do us a favor, don't go out there in between shows because it's just too much it's too much confusion. And our wait staff can't get the tables clean. They can't run with all those people in the hallways. So that's the only time I won't take pictures. Is in between shows if they're busy and if the place shares the same door. There's a lot of places I could send people out the back door and take the pictures from stage. But then they're still in the way of the fucking wait staff. So it's a no-win situation. People are going to get pissed off. You know, now people don't come to the late show come Thursday. Now people yeah, know don't come get, early because the places are small and they get packed. Well, for you, you got to piss off. The, unfortunately, it's better for you to piss off the fans and the owner, you know. No, 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 no. I, fuck the owner. I'd rather the people who pay to come see me and listen to the podcast and they're going to come see you. I love those motherfuckers. You got to, they're, they're family. They're not even fans. I, I don't want no fans. That's when I was 13. These people are fucking family. Sometimes I just, it's just business. I can't start the show an hour late because I took pictures. Do you follow what I'm saying to you? Oh, yeah. It's business. It's just straight up business. They're trying to run a business. I'm trying, you know, I can't start the show an hour and 15 late. Because both crowds are in the hallway. The wait staff can't be productive. So in return, if I take pictures, it's like the law. I'm getting the law, uh, the law of diminishing returns. It's going to be too much. Let's just avoid the pictures the first show. We'll take them to the second show. If you want, go to a bar and come back. I hang out out there, you know, for about an hour as long as I can. So you can't take it. You can't please everybody is what yeah, I'm trying to say. True. That's the business we're in. And in life, you can't please everybody. People are going to get pissed off at you for doing certain things. I couldn't go to a wedding on Saturday. She never comprehended it since the day she invited me. I explained to her that it's 13 hours to come to your wedding. And then I got to stay there for four days until night. I can't do that. I got a wife and a kid. I got to help my wife out. You know, I got home today from traffic at 4.30. I left the house at 6. I didn't see the kid. I would have loved to take a nap before I came here. Didn't work out that way. She wanted to see me. I had to go outside and play fucking soccer with her till 6.30. And we ate dinner and I came over here. If, if I don't do that, then I won't have a family. 
then I'll have a career, but I won't have a family. I have nothing at home. And then when the kid's 18, she's on a therapist saying that I didn't pay attention to her because I was a comedian. Do you understand me? <laughs> totally. It, it that never fucking ends. So before that shit happens, I pay attention. That's what I need to do. It seems like do. you got it kind of all figured out in a lot of ways. That when, you're a, when you fail so many times, you'll yeah. learn how to figure it out. I didn't write this fucking shit. I didn't write this. I'm a 54-year-old loser that learned it to write. You know, I got, the, I, I got married. I bought the American dream. And you get, you get out of college, you're like, I want to do what? I'm going to do what? I'm not doing that. And you change everything, and all of a sudden people aren't happy. You end up with a divorce and a kid. And now you got to run two families because guess what? As soon as you divorce your wife, there's always that hot chick that wants to come along. You got to start all over again. So now you got to pay child support. You got this chick here. You got to take her out for dinner on Friday. She's not going to suck your dick with an ice cube in her mouth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like Papa likes on Friday night. It's a fucking nightmare. And yeah, I mean, I, I will say I've probably learned more from failure than all. No, most you learn from failure. You learn from getting hit in the pocket. Oh, yeah. You know, you learn from getting hit in the pocket. You follow me? When you're uh, giving somebody half your fucking money and you got to sell your house, and you learn. I made a mistake. Next time, I'm going to play a little fucking closer to my chest. That's how you learn in life. It's not by reading a book because you're not going to listen or read. The art of war is going to teach you how to, or the war of art is going to teach you how to plan and strategize or both how to fucking uh, get rid of your fears or whatever but it's not going to tell you what to do and what not to do and what's a mistake and what's not a mistake. Nobody knows. So it's too, you think Kenny Rogers, when he invested in that fucking chicken company, he thought that, no, you know, they came to him with a deal. Who the fuck knows until you try it? Kenny Rogers. Remember when that, Kenny that Rogers roasted us? That chicken was so shitty. Oh, my God. It was horrific. Didn't Kenny Rogers ever go in there one time? But they paid him a lump sum. They used oh, his dude. name. Oh, dude. He probably made a fucking he fortune. He probably made a fortune. That. He, that's how he got the facelift. That's how he got the whole fucking... That was a lot. Then he, if, if, if that paid for that, he sold a lot of fucking shit. Yeah, no. But it's... it's it's. Uh, you don't fucking get smart by fucking reading a book or reading about Nostradamus. You get smart by fucking failing. And then you decide what you're not, not going to do no more. I won't be doing that shit no more. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, totally. I mean, I... That's been my whole fucking career is one failure after another. And then probably the same thing that happened to you is when I said, fuck it, throw it all against the wall. Just said, let's see what the fuck happens. And then but it works. Nothing yeah. happens until you put your balls in the line. Totally. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing. You're not going to lift yourself spiritually. You're not going to lift yourself as a human being. Nothing happens until you take chances. Well, that record was my money on the fucking... Oh, line. sure. Yeah. Sure. That was my was. money. If it didn't sell, if it didn't sell I'm... I lost the money. But even that, it wasn't about the money with you. No. Definitely. It was never about the money with me at all. Lee, was it about the money when we started fucking around or anything? A hundred bucks a week. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not about the money. If you're doing this to get rich, you don't really want to do this. You have to do this because you feel it in your nuts and you believe in yourself. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to do this. And watch. I'm going to prove all of you is fucking wrong. And that's exactly what you did, which takes a lot of balls. When yeah, I heard pure, that, pure fucking anger, yeah. Pure anger, you know, and that's mixed. And you take a chance, and guess what? If that wouldn't have worked, you would, didn't fucking Cheryl Crow's first album get yanked from the radio stations? Didn't Alanis Morissette have a fucking album that was a disaster in Canada? Oh, and then she sure. came here. Listen, you don't learn, and then she fixed all the glitches. She said, "Oh, wait a second, I'm not a lounge singer." I'm a fucking pop. You know what I'm saying? That's how you... you like I'm saying, like, like Dylan getting booed off the stage. Yeah. People booed fucking Bob Dylan. For going electric. Yeah. When he was just growing. When he was... Growing. He, he was inventing this new form of rock. He was inventing the band, basically. Yeah, and growing. No, no, no. It's a... Uh, you... I was watching someone there, and they were talking about revenge. You know, that it's the same result, but... Uh, Sometimes you uh, lift from even pain. A parent dying, a brother dying, an animal. Sometimes you use pain to get to the next level. You know, there's next levels as a human being. You're never going to know them unless you jump in that fucking water. You're never going to know what you could do unless you could jump in that water. Well, that's like that famous Dylan show, the Royal Albert Hall show in 66, was a, the famous Judas. Some guy in the crowd screamed Judas. I mean, he fucking flipped out. And he goes... uh he screams, I don't believe you, and he looks back at the band, the band. He goes, 
play it fucking loud, and they played uh, like a Rolling Stone. Most famous concert of all time, they're just calling him Judas. You can hear it. You can go buy the fucking records. You know, it's the best rock I've ever heard. And like I said, best band I've ever heard in my life, and they're booing him. What's going on, Lee? How you feeling over there, Tarzan? I'm not feeling amazing. It didn't do nothing to you. You're bulletproof. He feels amazing, but he can't get the word amazing out. No, no. Let me tell you something. He's, this kid is a fucking Jewish tank of debt. <laughs> I could never sink him. I'll tap out before he's. He doesn't know. If he doesn't need 2,000 stars, he doesn't know. He'll stay at home. I will say he looks pretty good now. And then he'll tell me how he's not getting high on stars no more. And I'll go, Lee, because you ate four fucking stars and you ate 2,000 milligrams of me on a Monday night. How are you going to go backwards? You got to go upwards. See, I always heard the weed wasn't a, you couldn't get a tolerance, I guess not. <sighs> yes, you can. You okay. get the tolerance There's... to the stars after a year. You get a tolerance to anything. If I you smoke so. weed every day, if you, that's why I never understood people who bought a pound of weed. Because after a week, you're not getting as high as you were the first time. And even if you take that weed and put it away for a while, you'll get high when you re-smoke it, but not as high as you did the fucking first time. I rotate weeds. I got really? one, two... I got four weeds right now. Well, I got two what kind, here. What kind of weeds are these? Let me see. The shit that killed um, <laughs> Kennedy was we smoked. The shit that made Lee go purple. I got this shit that my friend grew up in the mountains. And I got a container over there. I don't know what that is. I don't even know what it is. It's been there. It's like a general weed for anybody who wants to smoke. But at the house, I got a... <laughs> Something like Neptune OG, and I got like, General weed. and I got some other shit. That's, What's Neptune OG? Neptune. OG, I just left it there tonight because I had all this shit. I didn't know if you smoked or not. I usually got four types of weed. I smoke one in the morning, one for lunch, and I trick myself. You know what I'm saying? Like I trick myself, and then I'll save the weed that's the strongest. I'll save like two bowls for Sunday when I get off the plane. Let's say I smoke that weed on Monday. When I get off the plane on Sunday, that weed's gonna be strong again. You follow me? No, oh, yeah, no, I don't. I never thought about. You gotta that play way. this shit. You gotta play the hand. You gotta trick your body, Lee. You gotta I trick know, your I, mind. I know I don't look that great, Wheeler, but like if, if like you took this and, and no disrespect, like you, we'd probably call the ambulance if you took what I took tonight. Yeah, yeah. he took once. Yeah. If you, you would have smelled the Chinese time. man. Yeah, no, no, and give him five more minutes. He turns into fucking General Chow. <laughs> Give him five more minutes. He, he don't look Chinese. He'll be General Chow over there and shit like that. Talk to me about this new you, album you, you got pre coming you press, out. You press the record button. Um, uh, it's uh, it's called the new album. Did you just fart? No. Just tell us about my new record. You just fucking ripping farts. I would never do but that. The, the police is coming. Hit him with the sound effect, Doug. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is 10 minutes. Can you believe what I got to deal with? There you go. Right on time. <laughs> All right, what is the new album? The new now, what album are you is called um it's called Old Wheeler. It's one of my favorite records. My favorite country records is called Old Whalen. It was Whalen Records called Old Whalen. And I was listening to it a lot when I was making the record. I'm like cuz the first albums, you know, just they said a lot about first records just your whole life up till then. Then this one is just really my life from the first record to the the second one. Life on the road and really being feeling like an old man like these fucking new apps where girls fucking texting you their fucking pussies. This new world that we're living in. I don't understand. Fucking understand. In some ways, I'm a, I'm a, like an old man, and I'm just kind of a a man out of time. I guess I should say. Like meet these fucking like girls tweet you their fucking twats and shit like this. It's just this world I don't know. So it's really a record about um um an old. I guess maybe redneck gets old. Is be the 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 word to describe it. Just a man, out of t you know, some southern man out of time playing New York City and meeting girls and just be being lost, really, was is what the, the what kind of uh, influenced the record. And uh, I'm, I love, it's, I'm so I'm so happy with it. It's, I think it's way better than the f first one. All right, so where do you sell this album? iTunes. Yeah. What day? What day is this coming out? Tomorrow? No, June second. Oh, no, 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 this comes no. out on Wednesday, the 29th. Yeah. Uh, the 31st, you can start pre-ordering it on iTunes. Okay. Um. And also, I got. I decided to want me to do a sales pitch number eleven. I was like, "Fuck, I'm because I own it. I'm like, I'm gonna keep the price down. You pre-order it six ninety nine. Because to me, the digital file that's tremendous. That's tremendous. Because I'm like, a digital file is not a. Because I grew up with like you with yeah, records. Yeah, like records. Like if you're gonna buy a digital file, it's just a fucking file. Like, it's like insurance. You, but you I'm saying see. it's like it's like yeah. I, 
like when you buy a there because whatever the digital companies are like we well, own it for life i was like yeah when i bought microsoft word i own it for life but i could never fucking find it if you ask me to find my own computer old software programs from 10 years ago i don't have that shit so like just keep the digital copies low priced and just hopefully i'll sell more that way but um uh i don't mean to spend all my time talking about pricing but yeah um starting this friday you can start pre-ordering it uh, and now you're gonna tour this out how how yeah well, what cities are you going well, to we're doing know? a week of record release shows second the second in nashville the sixth in new york the eighth here hopefully you guys can make it out and then after that we're gonna take a little probably a couple weeks off and figure out what kind of tour we're gonna do are you gonna release it on pornhub again um i th- yeah we're, we tomorrow morning i gotta get up fucking early because i'm doing a vi- shooting a video in the morning and then there's I'm not making this shit up. There's fucking naked titties in the video. And we're going to premiere the video. This ain't no regular pop country shit. We're premiering the fucking video with naked tits on Pornhub. See, that's ingenuity. That's American ingenuity. Yeah, exactly. We ain't fucking around anymore. So see? I, that ain't Garth Brooks shit. I had never heard of what you were talking was I what you were talking about with Rogan. They used to release albums for free before they came out. Like and stream them. Well, yeah, no. A lot of the albums these days like Places like NPR and that shit, like, get a taste of it there. And I and I tried all these places. Like, here's my album. You can play it for free. And they wouldn't even take it. So, like, I, I was like, wh- who would play my album for free a week before to let people have a taste? So we contacted Pornhub. And they're like, we love it. Yeah. And those guys have been great to me. They gave me free fucking ads. Like I said, what if I sold my album to, like, even 1% of the world's masturbators? I'd be the richest man in the world. It's like, go where the audience is. They're all fucking whacking off. Listen, man, that's what they did with Sons of Anarchy, the DVDs. They sold them in Harley Davidson stores. Oh, that's brilliant. That's how they made their biggest fucking... Yeah, they sold all the DVDs in Harley Davidson stores. <laughs> they were partners with Harley Davidson or some shit, and that's how you do it. It's American fucking ingenuity. Yeah. That's what you did, man. And I go, I go, where's the, I go? what's the most popular website I go to? You go to my computer, you press P, fucking Pornhub comes right up. It's the hub of porn. That's the hub. You love it, Henley. You love porn. That's what my, you, my computer bastard. does too. Yeah. Yeah. See, we're we're, uh, we're masturbators from the. Now, same. what's the difference between Pornhub and YouTube? You porn. Um, it might be the same company. Yeah, it's probably all the same shit. I'll tell you what. Let me see. Both fucking are great. Um, see, I actually go to PornMD because it what's searches all the other sites. See, yeah, PornMD. Porn I don't know that. What's yeah, that? it searches all their. That's sites. where it figures out like what your ailment is for too much porn. Yeah. But uh, so you go to PornMD and what do you type in? And you can type in whatever you want. But that this is so this is what Pornhub owns. When you type in, what do you want to see? What I want to see, yeah. uh, Joey Diaz. No, what do you want to see? I don't know. Probably uh, usually chubby girls. Yeah, really? like chubby I, like, girls? Uh, I like chubby. I like uh, I like blowjobs. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, what is, what's it called? A uh, big? What's the big? What's it called? BBW. BB. Big, oh yeah. Big beautiful women. Yep. <laughs> All those. So Pornhub owns. Uh, Red Tube, U Porn, Tube Eight. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, they've been fucking great to me because I'm the only one, I'm the only fucking artist out there playing music who will talk to them. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's all, you know. Why ignore that audience? Is my what I. You they know. also did like a comedy contest, U Porn, didn't they? Yeah, probably, I don't know. They did like a comedy contest, and uh, listen, man. Whatever works. The reason why you sit in that chair is I like what you do. And I like the balls that you did well, to I appreciate do it. it man. So that's the only reason I love it. I love the music. I love your attitude. I love that you told them all to suck your dick. You know. You just, what's you know what's really fun is playing a club in like the South and a bunch of whole audience of dudes with their backwards baseball caps just screaming, Which one of you queers gonna suck my dick along with me? Tremendous. Sit on nice my to- face. Which one of you queers gonna suck my dick? This is <laughs> fucking poetry. tremendous. Yeah. You can't even a record label would see that and shit themselves and run like hell. So I don't want you around. I want somebody who's going to go, you know what, we're going to fucking put this. We're going to run this somewhere. Now, the serious play your music? Yeah, Outlaw Country's been pretty good to me. I mean, they get a lot of blowback, you know, but they got the balls to keep playing it, which is cool. They, uh, they've been... A couple, I mean, a couple of the stations play. I think it's the Outlaw Country station that plays it, which is good because they call themselves outlaw country so that's cool i'm trying to think who else plays it i think stern played it a couple times maybe i don't know did you do stern also 
I did the after show when I was in New York. All right. Which, what's that? The minor leagues to get on this stuff? I, I have no idea. I don't um, know how it works anymore. I don't listen to Dick. I'm too busy trying to fucking keep above water. Yo, know, I'll tell you what I don't listen to is the fucking radio. No, there's nothing to listen to. Yeah. I listen to Sirius in the car. I listen to Ozzy's Boneyard. Oh, that's good, yeah. I listen to uh, the one that plays Soundgarden, Rooster, and all that shit. Oh, yeah, the other day I was listening to you guys were listening to, I fucking love Alice in Chains. Yeah. You listen to uh, Man in the Box. When Man in the to. Box. I listen to Studio 54 sometimes in the daytime. I, I'll put that on. Well, I have a question for you now, speaking of that. Do you think disco gets a bad rap? Because everyone seems to hate... I think it's some of that shit's fucking killer. Listen, man, people are going to hate everything that's different. Or when, popular. When disco came along, disco, you know, fucked it up for a while. I remember them burning disco albums and shit. Oh, yeah, they, they were, had the big thing at the White Sox Stadium or whatever. Yeah, I remember all that. Was it disco they were burning? Or yeah. somebody's rap? Or, it's like, let's bring rock and roll back. But I listen to that shit now. It's like, some of that shit's so good. That... Boogie Oogie Oogie and yeah. this is a couple grand jams that get you going classic this like you can't listen to um, you know what's the big uh, Bee Gees hit um, Staying Alive Stand, you can't listen to Staying Alive and say that sucks no you it's can't, you can't listen you can't listen to the whole Saturday Night Live album Saturday Night Fever yeah and say it sucks you can't it's a, it's killer you songs can't. was that Saturday Night, Saturday Night Fever I'm sorry yeah. You can't. It's a great fucking album. And when you, if you don't listen to it every day and you put it on, like somebody like me that heard it every day for a year and then stopped, like I didn't listen to that shit ever again. But now sometimes I hear that one jam from it. How can we touch in the morning rain? That one, whatever the Bee Gees. Oh, yeah. That's a great tune. That one. That's, that's uh, the ballad. Uh, the one that they were dancing to. How Deep Is Your Love? Uh, yeah, How Deep Is Your Love. They got the other one, uh, Alakazam, Staying Alive. Yeah. Staying alive. What's the one? Da, 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 da. The one they're dancing all fucked up at that club, you know? You know, Andrew Dice Clay used to do Travolta impersonations at that club. Like, when he was a kid, Saturday Night Fever was big, and Andrew would go to that club, whatever the fuck it was called, and dance like Travolta, and they'd pay him. No, that's a good game. Fucking tremendous. But uh, Lee, how you doing? You looking? You starting to look around? Yeah, it's over for Lee. That's it. He's trying to tell me he's in training and shit on the week. I did thirteen fifty. I did sixteen hundred, and I went to the ice house. I'm, and nothing happened. I'm high, but yeah, that's what. Yeah, I'm, no, I got a vouch for this dude. He's pretty fucked up. No, he's he's good. Yeah, I'm fucked, fucked up. Yeah, he's good. He's solid tonight, like the rock of fucking Jabal. I got. I'll tell you what. The, that transmission those, fluids hit you later. See, I got a piss. All right, go this way. I'll write this out and uh, go through here. Right through here. Got it. We all fucked up. First of all, listen to me. And listen to me quickly, people. I I love Lee. I don't know. I listen to him when he tells me. You know, he had a problem one night with Uber. They sent some fucking dude over here. And then he got Lyft. So one night he turned me on at the fucking Lyft. And you know what, man? Like I told you, the cars are clean. I like that light in the front to tell you that, that they're there. What do you like about Lyft? I, I think the drivers are more friendly. I think the drivers are, uh, they tend to be nicer, and uh, it's a, it tends to be uh, just an overall better experience. Well, listen, Lyft is a ride-sharing company that believes in treating its people better. Lyft believes that being a ride-sharing driver should be fun. If you're having a good time, so are your passengers. Only Lyft offers an in-app tipping. When you drive for Lyft, you keep 100% of your tips. Drivers have been paid over $150 million in tips since the feature was introduced. Express Pay lets drivers get paid almost instantly instead of waiting for weeks. Lyft has even taken the guesswork out of pickups. The new AMP device uses color coding to help passengers find their drivers. You can earn hundreds of dollars a week plus tips. And if you want to make more money, drive more. It's never been easier to give yourself a raise. It's a simple formula. Happy drivers mean happy passengers. Maybe that's why 9 out of 10 Lyft rides get a perfect 5-star rating. So join the ride-sharing company that believes in treating its people better. You're looking for a job, guys. You're in between jobs. You fucking want to put on an album. You're singing songs. You don't know. Yet. There's a thousand things you could do and pick up. Listen, the one Lyft guy I talked to, he does hardwood floors. And on the weekends and a couple nights a week, he fucking drives to support his family. You have no more excuses to sit on the couch, okay? Lyft has a job for you. You got a car, you got insurance, 
It's a beautiful car. What are you doing with it? You're sitting at home? Go to Lyft. Go to Lyft.com slash Joey today and get a $500 new driver bonus. That's Lyft.com slash Joey. Lyft.com slash Joey. If you're going to drive, make some money. This is the way to make extra money in your spare time and make as much money as you want to make, and it's all up to you. You run your own little Lyft service there. So go to Lyft.com slash Joey today and get a $500 new driver bonus. That's Lyft.com slash Joey today. Limited time only. Terms apply. Guess what, bitches? Beach season is coming. Okay, you're going to the beach. You don't want to get sand stuck in your ass, sand stuck in your little monkey guys. You never want to get sand stuck in your nutsack. You'll never get that stuck out, that stuff out. Guess what? Bidets are here to help you out for the summer. All right, you don't have to walk around with rotten ass no more. You know what rotten ass does to you? It gives you hemorrhoids. It gives you infections. Your pubic hairs fall out of your asshole. You don't need this aggravation in your life. So go do me a favor. Go to hellotushy.com right now. And take a look at the portable bidets they have delivered right to your house with a 60-day guarantee. You understand me? They don't fuck around. You got 60 days. You don't like it. If it breaks, you send it back. 60-day guarantee. I got one in my house. Lee, tell them, has your asshole changed since you've been using the bidet? There hasn't been a day since I installed it, installed it that I don't think think that I have it and that I don't use it. I use it every single day. Does the your first wife thing use do. it? She does. She likes it too. I like it more though. I'm telling you, men, women, this is your chance right here to wash that fucking monkey, wash that asshole, and keep it refreshed all day. Go to hellotushy.com right now and slash church and get 10% off your order, all right? Spray your butt clean with (laughs) tremendous fresh water. And what you do is you don't fucking use tap water if you don't want to. You got to test the pH because if you're washing your ass with dirty pH, What's the fucking use? Go to hellotushy.com right now, slash church, and get 10% off your order. But days are back. Father's Day's coming. Mother's Day's coming. Their grandparents, their asshole stinks. They're in the Dodge all day. Get them a bidet for Mother's Day or Father's Day and make their fucking holiday complete. Go to hellotushy.com right now, slash church, and get 10% off. I want to thank Hello Tushy. I want to thank Lyft. And I also want to thank... Honor.com. Go to honor.com and press in. Church. And get 10% off any supplement in the house. And these things, listen, money back guarantee on Alpha Brain. Nobody else does that in the industry, okay? You got New Mood. You got Shroom Tech Sport, which I tell you what, I take a half a capsule and my fucking heart's beating. I'm breathing better. Everything's beautiful, all right? One more time. Honor.com and press in. Church. Boom. And get 10% off your order. I'll see you cocksuckers next week. Don't forget, I'll see you tomorrow night, Thursday night, at Levity Live in uh, Nyack. Nyack, New York, the former house of the Cuckoo's Nest. I used to go up there and get fucking served. I love you guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you guys next Monday night. Stay black. We never decide what to close on. The what? We, we, need, we never decide what to close on. Snowblind by the fucking uh, black whatever society. Black Label Society. There you go. Well, can I thank you guys for having me? Am I interrupting? Fuck yeah. Yeah. Dude, I had a blast. I love you guys. This is fucking great. Kick that mule, Lee.